Hoggins, it's time for those most famous words in motorsports. Hey, Twenty Two Radio. Time for another edition of Race 22 Ra Ra Radio. In-depth coverage of all your favorite short track racing action from all perspectives. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Race 22 Radio is hosted by Race22.com founder, Mr. Langley Austin. Come here, I'm gonna eat you! I'm bigger than you, I'm higher in the food chain! Get in my belly! Come on! Race 22 Radio is co-hosted by Performance Center Racing Warehouse President, Mr. Roger Johnson. You just keep your foot on the gas and drive right by him on the outside. You told me nobody goes to the outside on turn four. If you go to the outside, you can hold it. With special co-host, Corey Latham. So sit back, buckle in, hold on tight, because Race 22 Radio is coming at you at full throttle. And now your host, Mr. Langley Austin. All right, guys, we're here, Race 22 Radio, back on the air for uh, the sixth show of the year. Uh, nobody thought we'd make it past the first one, but uh, here we are for our sixth one in a row. And, uh, of course, I've got uh, Roger over here to my right. Obviously, you can't see, but I'm telling you where he's at. So, <laughs> Roger, <laughs> uh, you, uh, man, it's been an uh, in interesting week, um, you know, getting ready for race season. I see it's getting emptier in here. Well, they did roll one more car in here, so. Yeah, it's getting good. We're getting getting close to the end, getting ready to crank things off. I like it. Did you get any parts built this week? Or yeah, what? we did. We actually did. We got a bunch of stuff going. Um, yeah, we're still building cars, man. Not just building parts. It's still nuts. So we'll just keep going after it, and hopefully we can get some races in here so we can customers can quit calling i don't mean that to be bad we just need parts built well they're going to start calling when they yeah, start wrecking I so I and that's uh probably going to commence probably this weekend i would say there'll be a big good yeah. bunch of it this weekend i, I mean imagine. you know ten thousand ten thousand to yeah. win and a limited late model show 125 laps i mean yeah i'd say they're going to do some wrecking yeah so especially there <clears throat> yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, we uh, we will talk to uh, Anthony Anders here in just a little bit. Uh, I know he's got uh, some interesting things uh, to say. Uh, he's uh, been they've been working really hard down there. Uh, so, and, and you know, we did have Corey on on the intro there. Uh, we had him on there last week, and of course, he was a no show. Yeah, he didn't no, show up. No call, no show. He'd have yep. been fired from his job. Yep. Um, didn't but even. He I mean, doesn't get paid for this one. No so. emoji text. Nothing. So no no firing. Uh, I guess. Yep. No, I didn't nope. come because I actually have a job. Oh so. well, I mean, yeah. let, let's what? not let's not get carried away here. Well, you know. I, no. Huh? No job. Yes. It's no good. Yes. yes. You need to go yes. back to the old Corey. Yes. Nobody likes <laughs> this new one. <laughs> <laughs> Except for his uh, creditors. They, they like <laughs> yeah, it's good. If we had this show on Friday night, it'd be a lot better. <laughs> Oh, uh, I don't. I don't think <laughs> I don't it think would. We actually, can. no, I don't think we can. No. I think that would go really bad, really fast. Right. So, yeah. uh, oh, Doc's yelling at him now. Already. Oh, no. <laughs> Been here two minutes, seconds. Doc. Yeah, well, he wasn't here for the new mics last right. week, so yeah. we got to yeah. get him new dialed equipment. in this I mean, week. Equipment. Like, like, what, what was that show? Uh, WKRP in Cincinnati. This is pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. you know, four, four rednecks with some head so headphones, and you know, wow. now we got microphones, and I got a spit. No, I can't even see Zach, which is a good thing. So, right. well, I mean, if you, if there's Zach one Bringer, person you no can't see, that's sports. the one not to see. Yeah, I know. Well, he, uh, I've done I've done saw a picture of him earlier. That's all I need to see. Uh, yes, <laughs> glamour shot, <laughs> glamour ladies shot. and gentlemen. <laughs> wow. wow. You'll, they'll see it. Everybody will get to wow here in a little yeah, bit. Yeah, everybody will dial yeah. that uh, photo up for everybody to see here you in just a little bit. You want to stay tuned. Zach, uh, he's, uh, he's really proud of that photo. He's I awful believe. pretty. He he's a pretty fella. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the great thing is we can talk about him all we want because his mic's not live, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, really? So, the one time yeah. he can't respond. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first time in his life he's not been able to talk crap. Right. Wow. He'll, so, he'll make up yeah. for it. 
Yeah, in, in addition to uh, Zach Bruinger over here, we uh, also have uh, Darren Hackett. We were scheduled to have uh, Renee Hackett, but uh, she's a little bit under the weather. Uh, so we've got Darren here, and uh, I'm sure uh, I'm sure he's going to bring some interesting things to the table. They have so much going on yeah, I'm glad uh, he's with here. Uh, Caraway Speedway, the Southern Modified Racing Series, the 602 Tour, both of them, the Limiteds and the Late Models, I mean the Modifieds, and the uh, – Southeast limited late models now. Uh, it, did I miss anything? Super late models. Oh, it, it, I did miss one. <laughs> yeah. Super late models. See, nice. Not my thing. That's why I missed it. <laughs> I, I, I just totally overlooked that one right there. But we, we've got uh, you know Darren Hackett here, and uh, we'll also uh, be talking to uh, Anthony Andrews, as I said a few minutes ago. Uh, so that'll be. Uh, That'll be uh, that'll be three interesting guys to talk to. Uh, of course, Caraway Speedway opens up uh, next weekend, not this upcoming weekend, but uh, the following weekend on a Sunday. Pretty typical for them now, uh, opening up on Sunday, which I think is great. It gives people an opportunity to go somewhere else and uh, then, you know, make their way over to Caraway, which uh, is what I plan to do. I'm not sure if I'm going to the car store opener at uh, Southern National next weekend or uh, Hickory's opener uh, since they happen to be on the same day. But uh, you know, if we actually seen Langley, either one of them would be a uh-huh. surprise. I know he never goes to the racetrack. Well, wow! He always acts like he's yeah. around, right? Yeah. He's sending yeah. you. Or, yeah, like probably, I see Corey there, but I don't ever see Langley. Probably go this race. Probably go this race. I ain't seen yeah. him in three years. It's right. here. <laughs> right. That's right. In Martinsville. Hey, yep. I've that's, been here six it. weeks in a row, and you have not. Well, I have. You know. just, I've been here. Saying. No, you have not. You have oh, missed one yeah, too. I did. So, My kid I, got I sick. I am the only. I am the only one on the show now. The producer's oh, been geez. here, and 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 my wife's been here. Nobody yeah, but your else wife here is the here. show. What do you mean? If she uh, doesn't come, you're not coming. She runs the whole show. Let's uh, let's not get carried away here because I don't I don't I don't think. Yeah, we if she don't show her. up, it won't get set up. Right, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mason Dunn chiming in. He wanted to know if the live Again? video feed was coming in 2021. Well, we would have had it tonight, but we realized that Zach was going to be on here, and, and nobody we wants figured to see that, that nobody wanted to see and anything that looked actually, like that. Wait, but actually, the glamour shot is so much better <laughs> than if we saw it live. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the glamour shot that they're getting ready to post up, you like we'll wait here a little bit and save it so it escalates quickly. But it's Ooh. nice. I'm not sure. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm not sure. No, he's got no live mic. <laughs> no, we, we still ain't he's got you turned so we don't, right. He's we don't to talk want you, so bad. We don't want you to be able to talk right. yet. It's not your time, man. It's our time to talk crap. You right. know, <laughs> we we invited Roger Pitts, but we haven't seen him yet. So <laughs> I, I don't know what's going on there. Oh. <laughs> he's somewhere planting corn. Wow. Uh, Mason Dunn said, never believe Langley until he walks in pit gate with speeding ticket in hand. Yeah. I'm not getting any speeding tickets this year. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. Not, I'm not getting any more, though. So, uh, And i got to stay close to my mic so you guys can hear me here. That's one thing I had trouble with last week. So I'm practicing, man. I'm uh, I'm like a racer. You know, I'm uh, trying to get practice in and get better. And, uh, you know, I'm actually a lot like Zach Bruinger. I'm not really getting much better. So. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Jeez, this place. Oh man! Uh, wow. I'm sorry for what's getting ready to happen here. Wow. Hopefully, uh, you guys can hear us good out there. I see, uh, you know, you guys chiming in here. Hopefully, you can hear us good. We uh, did a little audio test earlier to make sure that uh, we New sounded good. Uh, we didn't have Corey, uh, you know, of course, because you know he gets here, you know, two minutes before the show goes uh, live. So because I have a real job, like I said. Right now, only guy in the world. Uh, one thing that uh, we've established is is that Corey is the only guy in the world that has a real job. No, I'm just talking about you. No, I'm no, just no, saying no, this no, to you every no. time. No, I, every, I, I've talked to uh, many people, and they go, does Corey think he's the only one that's, uh, that's got no. a real job? No. Yes, he does. Langley's the only person I know that gets up at 3 o'clock in the afternoon every day. <laughs> well, I get up a little earlier on show day. And, and it's not to go to work. Show day he does. <laughs> yeah, show day. I get up a little early. He's I got up, up at like 1.30. No, 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 no. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I got up at 11 this morning. Good. Okay. No, Actually, I'm proud of you. Seven, Listen, so. hey, you're making strides. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm not really trying to. I know. That's what's even cooler. Not, uh. No intentions there whatsoever. So uh, I guess uh, my producer over here, if he's uh, if he's dialed in, we're gonna grab him up for the news here. Oh jeez. And and of course he's not ready. So uh, every week it doesn't you, matter. He's not ready. Are you you gonna give me a cue? I mean, are you yeah. That was that was your cue. We're ready for the news. Yeah, we're ready for the news. All right, let's dive out into it. What do you say? How about 19-year-old Jordan Pickerel from Keeling, Virginia? He's worked part-time with the Sellers Racing for the past five years, and he's raced pure stocks at uh, South Boston Speedway, earned Rookie of the Year 2016. 
This past season, he had two victories, eight top fives, never finished outside of the top ten. This might be a name you want to remember because he's going to jump into a late model this year. Uh, Pickerel's looking to make several starts in the late model stock car in 2019 with late model owner Eric Winslow. So that might be another name I'm going to look back for in the very near future. Uh, Winslow uh, stated that he's going to put uh, Pickerel in one of his late models when the, the Winslow folks are racing somewhere else. Pickerel said, and I quote, I look forward to getting my feet wet in late models. I don't see ourselves contending or being in the middle of things. They're just trying to get their, uh, get comfortable in a late model stock car. So that's a cool story coming out. For good good job. Good uh, good young man, I understand. So looking forward for uh, him. Uh, we talked about last year, uh, you know, big national championship. Last week was talk about the old man. He still got it. Well, the old man, the king, could Philip Morris make a run for national title number six this year? Uh, some say yes. It's Morris out of Rutgersville, Virginia, recently posted his schedule right here on Race22.com. Uh, in 2019, he's going to race 38 races on his schedule this year. He ain't slowing down. He's old as I am. No, and I wouldn't be surprised if he run more <laughs> races than that. Exactly, exactly. Whatever it takes, uh, especially coming down to the end of the year, uh, Morris will race full season at South Boston Speedway. He'll be running select races at Langley Speedway, Dominion Raceway. Morris will also make at least one start so far on the schedule. Southern National Motorsports Park, Myrtle Beach Speedway, and Hickory Motor Speedway. Last year, even though everybody said, how can be a national champion? Didn't win his own track championship. Well, they have passing points, and I think that come into play. But last year, he had 35 starts. 23 victories uh, in racing against the best everywhere he went. He didn't uh, didn't go uh, henpecking anywhere. So uh, he only finished outside of the top uh, ten, what, four times over last year. And, of course, uh, he was in the head-to-head -head with Carlson, Midwest superstar. Uh, right. So they're, now they're tied with five each, you know, most uh, since 1982, since they've gone to this format with late model stocks. Uh, so they're tied right now. So they might be a tiebreaker coming this year. What do you think? Well, I mean, Larry Phillips is the one that he's tied with, so, yeah. Oh, okay. It, Larry won't be in any races anytime well, soon. Well, okay. <laughs> so. Gotcha, gotcha. You can see that story, the details on race22.com. Hopefully uh, Carson, they're not that confusing. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, I got the information from the story. I know, that's why I said that. Yeah, thank you. Car store cranks it back up March 9th in less than two weeks, Southern National Raceway Park, Super Late Models, Knockout Qualifying at 2.30, uh, followed by Late Model Stocks, Green Flag at 3 p.m. Uh, can't wait to, to check that out. Hickory Motor Speedway, open practice. I think uh, you're going to be over there this weekend, open practice, March 2nd. Anderson Motor Speedway, open practice, 1 to 5. It had on their website, March 2nd as well. So you're getting, getting the need for speed, come out there and check those guys out, shake them down for get ready for the season. Of course, we're going to be talking to lots about Caraway Speedway coming up, their big uh, season over 54th year of racing at the Caraway Speedway. So looking forward to that. March 10th, season opener. Race time at 2 p.m. Southern Modified Racing Series 602 Super Late Models 602 Modifieds uh, Late Model Sportsman. We'll get into those details. Mini stock and new cars. Full Slater Racing March 10th in the Greenville Pink and Speedway. We're going to hear from uh, the owner uh, or promoter uh, Anthony, Anthony Anders, Anders coming up here in a little bit. March 2nd this coming weekend the Meltdown Season Opener. Gates for fans open at 11 a.m. Racing at two. And if they get 25 cars, 25-plus cars, they'll be racing for $10,000 in ease. Yeah, and I, I suspect that they'll have 25 cars. I hope they cars. do. I, I hope they I do. I hope so, too. And I hope the fans uh, show up. And, and I think uh, being the limited, being the big show, I think that's going to be interesting. Just from the talk, you know, yeah. people I've seen on Facebook. And, you know, of course, we got a lot of Facebook racers who actually don't show up to the racetrack. So that may uh, yeah, play sure. a little bit of a factor yeah. there. Right. I mean, that's one thing I can at least say for Zach over here. He does show up to the racetrack every now and then, anyways. <clears throat> well, once he not get thrown out, you know what I mean? Like, he shows up when he's allowed to. E everybody you know? needs a field filler. Right. Everybody. Right. So. <clears throat> All right, <laughs> I couldn't. Uh, I can't resist on Zach. I don't know I why. Love him. I, don't, right. I don't know why it is. Like everybody else, I'm nice to, but I just can't resist. No, I him. like him. I think he gets sad if you don't pick on him. Yeah, we still ain't turned his <laughs> mic on. I know so. he gets <laughs> super sad if you don't pick on him. I think Doc has just unplugged the entire board. What, what, <laughs> what in the hell? There's smoke coming out of it. Right. Know. I don't think that's that wasn't in the manual. I'm pretty for sure that was not in the how-to video. <laughs> Oh man! Oh wow! Well, let's uh, let's dive in with uh, Darren Hackett over here. Let's first. get in uh, it. I've been I've been wanting this for a while. <laughs> I I have. No, I, not in a bad way. I, I got a bunch of questions. I I get a chance to you know so many people, Darren, to come in here and 
I get to hear little blurbs of this and little blurbs of this and we're doing this and this guy's doing this and I like to get the guy in here or get the organization in here and you know let them say what they're doing so we don't get a third and a third and a third we, we can actually kind of get some truth tell us what you got going on tell us what's happening over there tell us what you got new well we went to uh, we dropped NASCAR sanction last year uh, in May uh, it just you know, nothing against NASCAR it just wasn't working because we don't have any local cars right now our yeah. local I mean, local cars have really got away I bet there's not five race cars in Randolph County right now so that makes it tough because you need you need cars in your hub you know absolutely getting yeah. cars off yeah. someone else the friday night stuff once ace opened back up it put a hole in the friday night deal mm-hmm. uh that you know we were splitting the cars again yep. not that i was getting all our cars but we were getting a few and it helped make the deal so that kind of fell apart the way the point system's working with nascar if you don't have a full field there's no need for a guy chasing points to come and run i mean right uh, so that doesn't really you know not talking bad about nascar but they don't have a lot to really offer the short tracks anymore uh, I mean, for what, you know, uh, it, it's sad, and I think they they know it, but they have a hard time finding sponsor dollars and all just like everybody else is. So, uh, I mean, you know, I think they're starting to make some, some changes all the way across the board to yeah. maybe help, you know. But short track racing has to be strong for that end to be strong and vice versa. I agree. But anyhow, so we went to what we call late model sportsman this year, which is basically the southeast limited late model rules. We're going to have them on the FET tire. They'll have to buy four of the first race and then two or up to two a race. And the reason we're doing up to two is if a guy, you know, a low-budget team, yep. maybe he can't afford to buy two tires next week. So he can still come in as long as he leaves his four tires behind yep. and, and race those four to help that, that low-budget guy. Well, and since you put them on F50s, he can actually still race on right. the next race. Right, That's a good tire. Yeah, right. right. I mean, Langley and I talked about that a yep. bunch. Right, I think that was a good move. And, you know, uh, you know, the, the the guys like Josh Louder and people like that, that, that win, they're going to buy their tires. Right. Because they, uh, you know, they don't want to give anything up. They've got the money to buy the tires. Not that, you know, not that they're better than anybody else, but, I mean, they've got the money, the budget to do it with. But, you know, we need we need both ends of the spectrum. You know, you need those. And, and we've been on the SCUF program for the limited guys, which is basically what this is, you know, rule-wise, for pretty well now 10 years or better. But I think maybe the SCUF program has run its course. I do, too. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to get. The F45 doesn't really make a good SCUF like it used to because no. it doesn't repeat. Right. Yeah, I, I felt like at Franklin County when I was there, it, it was coming to an end. I could see it. Like, I could see that it was coming to an end. Like, I was going to have to pick something else because there just weren't any good scuffs left. I right. mean, really, I mean, Ron Barfield, he buys them all up. So, yeah. I mean, there's not really any good ones out there. So uh, You know, I, I got some for last year. I still got left, you know, because I didn't run enough races and all. Yeah, sure. That, that, and we're going to use them up on the Challenger Series for yeah. the Southeast Limited deal this year. And, you know, then I'll pretty well be out. I mean, you know, but – like you said, it's getting quality scuffs, plus the, the racers aren't really excited about being on the scuff program either. And it's a lot of work. A scuff program is a lot of work on our end because really, we try to grade them and, and give right. them a, Not good, sure. a good fair stack. I mean, it's, And it, if the racer doesn't like it, then why the hell are we doing it, right? right. I mean, I think that's a good move. And, right. then, and then the racer, if he's a seasoned racer, he gets it. Right. But, you know, someone that, that's not really been around a while, they're lost in the scuff world. Right. right. And they don't know how to make them grow, do this, do that. You know, Buddy Alder, Mac Little, people like that were real good at it. Mac Little can really make them work. Right, but everybody's not that way. So, no. you know, and so it, I think it's I think it's a move in the right direction. Maybe, you know, by July, I may be saying, well, I wish I hadn't done that. And then we're going to a basically one race a month deal. We pretty well, you know, yeah, we're still going to have track points for those shows, but we're not having, you know, uh, we're not. We maybe took away the shows that we were losing money on. I mean, I, I hate to talk like that. Yeah. And and go through the rebuilding process. And we brought right. Randy Myers in helping us last year. I kind of got him and Renee to bury their hatchet. Oh man. You know, and, and and Randy Randy's Randy's love is the modified deal, yeah. and mm-hmm. uh, it really is. And I think that you know I th- there's some positives and some you know everybody has positive negatives about them, but I mean. You know, I yeah. think that we're starting to make some strides in the proper direction now. Whether we are or not, we won't Me know. and Randy's supposed to go fishing next week. <laughs> yeah, I don't believe that at all. He he may put you out to sea. <laughs> no, I <laughs> believe that part. You guys <laughs> might go out on a boat. <laughs> but One of everybody you is not coming, coming back. back is not. <laughs> uh, no, nah, Randy's not. I'll just give him hell. 
<sighs> he's used to it. No, no, oh, yeah, by now. You got to be. You got to be. You've been <laughs> in the game this long. You, yeah, you got to have thick skin. Yeah. <clears throat> That's for sure. There ain't no doubt about that. <clears throat> what, do, what do you think, you know, going with the late model sportsman, you know, aspect of Southeast Limited Rules, what do you think that's going to do for you? I'm hoping – well, I know Max pretty well going to run all the races. Josh is going to run all the races. You know, we've got some guys, but uh, – Mac Little, were you talking about? Yeah. Okay. And, you know, I'm hoping to keep those limited guys, and maybe you'll pick up a few guys – in the late model end. I mean, yeah, naturally, you're not going to have anybody coming chasing points because there's no benefit as far as, I mean, NASCAR points. There's no benefit there because I'm not sanctioned anymore. But, you know, uh, and basically, Diaz is going to use the same rules at Southern National. I think Carter Eddy is. I don't know what East Carolina's doing. I don't, they're probably going to, they're Nobody not. Nobody knows what they're okay. doing. Okay. Yeah. But hopefully, they'll go this route. Nobody too. at all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, hopefully, and with us doing the Southeast Limited Tour, uh, me and David Lightning, what y'all, y'all want to call him. Yeah. yeah. We, we had Ed down, and we got Diaz on the phone, and we pretty well come to a weights package. And then Diaz has changed his just a fraction. But yeah. still, we kind of all agreed on something there. And we, you know, to try to make the different engine programs yeah. fit in. And, and hope, hopefully we're there. I mean, you know, uh, we won't really know if we get going. But I think I think we got the engine pack. The 302 is the one that's going to struggle the worst. And – yeah. You know, I mean, we can't do but so much to save the three, 603 motor. Right. Right. I agree. I mean, it's do we at need the to point where right, right. you really can't. We got I mean, nothing there's nothing we can, we can do. do. Right. I mean, we, we've, we've given us weight breaks, and we've given right. an option of a 650 carburetor. Uh, you know, that helps it a, a 7 8 horsepower and then a, 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 you know, different things. But still, 7 8 here and 7 8 there is still not enough to carry it all the way. I, yeah, it gets a weight break, but I still don't know if it's going to be – I think it'll be competitive, but I don't think it's going to be really the dominant or winning motor. I mean, uh, yeah. I think it can be competitive with the right car, but I don't think it can really win. I hate to say it like that. Yeah. I mean, but it's the truth. I mean. Maybe uh, some tracks it might can have right. a really good shot at winning. I like when we take the southeast tour to Hickory, it'd probably be all right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Orange County is borderline. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, with a good car and all. But Josh won Orange County last year with a 604, and – we took David and I took the head off, or he took the head. You know, he had to take the head off. We checked it at Caraway on Monday, and I can honestly say, because I saw it, it the head and I was right on the motor. I mean, you know, because uh, I've got one there that uh, I bought. To look at Robert Tyler stuff <laughs> <laughs> for a six oh four. Robert yeah. Tyler, wait a minute. Oh, big crate. Yeah, yeah no, nah, he wouldn't have had nothing <laughs> big. You just take the hood off and go. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, so, what am I gonna? That's a crate motor. Holy. <laughs> but I mean, t- to back up our evidence, I bought a new head. So yeah, I'm not sure. And right. Josh's head matched that head. I mean, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> you know, the head, everything that we looked at that day was right, and that was you know. But now Josh has a new car. Yeah. And you know that. Yeah. That, I saw he was testing the other day. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I mean they're putting a lot of effort into their right. program. And he liked the new, he liked the F50. That's the first time he'd been on the F50, and he liked it. And uh, everybody tells me that's a real repeatable tire. I mean, as far as you know, and, and that's what we kind of yeah. need doing a two-tire deal or whatever. Yeah, we used them as scuffs one time at Franklin County, and my guys were like, "Man, these are new." Yeah, they're basically new because yeah. they're just they're not they're never going to be a racer's favorite tire. You know what I mean? But they'll they'll like them because of the financial end of it. You yeah, know? yeah. If, then you, right. if you can get them to understand it. Well, I, I think it just takes time. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. Right. I mean, Brandon Clements chimed in here a minute ago. That's what they run at Carteret, and he said they're an awesome tire. So The F45. It, he runs well there. Yep. You can get an F45 scuff, and you say, well, it's got center line. You know, you punch it. Just, it yeah. But it just doesn't repeat. If it's done got into the heat cycle, it's no. just not yeah. what it was. So, I mean. Yeah. That's well, interesting. That's something we've been talking about over and over yep. here lately. This tire thing, Langley and I, it keeps it keeps rearing its, its head, you know, as to – what are we going to do that seems to be like kind of one of our next obstacles that that you know we wanted to at least take a deep dive into um and, and try to see what what ways people come up with so i'm interested in how your deal works how a lot of these deals work i think a lot of racetracks need to all take note and communicate to see you know what's working what's not what's you know well south boston motor miles gonna both be on the f50 as well right, so right. i mean yep. yeah we're pretty well all of us are getting there to it price I mean, wise what are you going to do what's what's the price wise f50 i know it's a big thing for a lot of people not trying to put you on the spot i just, mean he doesn't you know, really have a whole lot of control over right. that anyway so. it, it's actually supposed to be a little higher than f45 yeah, but is. i'm going to try to keep it in line yeah with the f45 just i mean it's two dollars basically a tire more yeah. but i mean yeah right uh you know we need we need to race cars right i mean 
it's a circle. You know, you, you need 100%. race cars to have race fans and vice right. versa. And it's tough, but a racetrack really is not – tire revenue is part of our, our revenue. Right. I'm not – I can't lie about that. It yeah. really is. Oh, yeah. But a racetrack's not supposed to survive on tire money. Yeah. It's supposed to survive on the back gate and the front gate. Right. Yeah. And we're all dependent on tire money to help survive now. And that's... Yeah, I mean, if you can come close to breaking even on your on your back gate, then when you get to the front gate, I mean, then you can make some hay. Right. You know? What's your plan with it? Like, I, I, what's your plan different from the next, right? Like, I, I, I have so many customers, the, the swames, the people that loved to race over there. And and we're diehards of the deal. Right. What what's what's your is, is it to try to diversify and just race there one weekend a month and do a few other things? What, what what's your long term plan with it now? That right there is the plan. It's probably at least for two years to see if we can get some stability built back. You know, hopefully get some cars back. Yeah. Uh, Through the Southeast Limited, is that what your is that your biggest variable of trying to get people back there, or what? What have you guys been doing behind the scenes to try to get people to come back to Caraway that people wouldn't know about? Well, the the modified is still our our biggest draw. It has been because of the the stadium there and and that nature. I think the Southeast Limited. uh, Some people don't like Ed. Some people do. Do you? Ed and I don't have any issues. Uh, I think that's something that we can. You know, he's still going to help with it. He's still involved with it. Does he it. own it or do you own it? We own it now. You own the yeah. Southeast Limited. But he's still involved. That's, you know, and we can, uh, you know, and. I think the Southeasters, I mean, if, if it had some some promotion, right, that yeah. was the worst thing. I never even knew when they ran. You know, you don't see nothing about it. All of a sudden there's a race. I mean, with promotion, I think it could be a really, really, really good thing. Well, well that's, that's that was the deal with it. And we got the 602 Tour, which is really a good uh you know, David done the six. He done the super limited first, yeah. and then you know he done the modified. I said, well, that's not going to work because I had tried the modified lights, but I put the six hundred three on them. I, I was up north and I seen the six hundred two deal, and I said, well, that's a neat deal, but I said six hundred two is not, po-, and it wasn't popular at that time no. in the south. And I said, well, that won't work, but it, it, it's starting to work. Everybody's six, building a six hundred two right. mod now. I've seen so, a bunch of guys got them. So we're starting to get. And then we put the southeast limited, and, we, and when we do the super, some of the modifies. That when we go to these other racetracks, it gives us a good show for the fans yeah i mean and that's what we're you know we're building on and and those you know tour racing is good and bad for short track racing right i mean it's it, you know i hate to talk bad about because i have tours as well right it takes cars away from the track but it's really not right now it's the only way you're gonna get any cars at the racetrack too because no racetrack has enough local cars that to really do yeah. what they need you know to have a 20 car field or whatever so uh hopefully between the Southeast Limited and the 602, that'll give us a good feeder base to go with either our, modif- our modifieds or supers when we go somewhere. Or if we got all four of them, that's great too. Yeah, what do you think is keeping the 602s from just taking off? I mean, the 602 Super Limiteds, when, when David started them, I was like, man, in three or four years, man, they're just going to take off. And they just really haven't. They they kind of stayed the same or maybe gained a little bit. It seems to have a little more positive this year so far by the, you know, the pre license sales on all four, uh, the pre, you know, Mentioning their car numbers, things of that nature. Uh, but like last year, if we could have got them all together at one time, we'd have had 17, 18 cars. We just couldn't seem to get yeah. 10 or 12 at a time. Uh, you know, like during the fourth last year, the Creeds were on vacation. That's, that was two yeah. cars. Yeah. Uh, you know, so we're not that far off, but we need to. And so far, it's, it's kind of still hanging around the, the stadium guys. We hadn't yeah. really got any, anybody new into it yet. If, much. You, if you can ever breathe, you know, life outside of the stadium into that division, I think it'd be incredible. I hate to say it, but really and truly, that's probably the motor that needs to be in every short track division. I agree, hundred percent. Me, me, and Roger have had that conversation a about a thousand times. Yeah, I have told him my idea of you know the perfection, you know, the perfect divisions, the perfect setup, and that. Th- right that six hundred two deal is really that. Those rules are yep. they're pretty. You know, it's basically any shot. It's basically as long as you've got a stock six hundred two motor. You're, that's basically in that tire and that eight, eight inch tire is uh you know we're trying to get control i think the soaking was hurting it some yeah yeah so we kind of got a, a a deal this year it can't barometer below 45 mm-hmm. that tire's about a 48 or 50 hot at the mm-hmm. start finish line so you know you want to give a little bit because you know yeah and you got to have the same guy because if you know i punch it and you punch it we could come up with something different. Yeah. Okay, we're not going to let them protest it because if you protest that tire and it's a 44, 
in one spot, you can holler it's illegal because right. it, but it may be 46 and 47 or 48 uh, everywhere else. Do you have a protest policy then? Do you have a protest? Does Caraway have a protest yeah. policy for the tires also? No, 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 not for the tires. Not for the tires. I just find it interesting if we just yeah. do people will hear later some of our, our later talk yeah. Yeah. with another promoter was about the protesting of tires that people thought people were soaking tires and you know there's they they did a protest deal so which i thought was interesting uh because and, and the reason i didn't want to let it protest is because like i say if you check it one spot and it's a 44 because you know you just don't want to get the guy hauling well you need to throw that out that tire and throw a guy out because he's a 44 sure. in one spot sure and you can't mind the guy putting his money up it says 44 in one spot he's right. he's wanting to throw it out i mean you right. can't that's his that's what he was after was to get you throwed out when he protested basically i mean because he thought something was wrong so you you just don't want to get into that argument i don't feel like but i think that's going to help it and then we're going to impound the tire if you want to race last year or you win a race this year, we're going to impound the tires, too, on the 602 deal. And I think that'll kind of get to soaking under control. I don't know if it'll I think it'll all, be a really good thing. Anytime we check, like, Rock, when he killed him at Orange County, it was like a 35. <laughs> when Robbie Brewer <laughs> killed him in the Modifieds, it'd be in the 30s. If anytime he was over a 40, it was, they were competitive. Right. I mean, so, yeah. and all of them were soaking. It's just sure. those two cars were better than everybody else. Right. I mean, uh, Mike Robertson told me, he said, I can't get mine below 45. Right. <laughs> He said, no matter, what I do, no matter what I do, I can't get by 45. Mike Robertson's raced Bowman Grail his life, okay? <laughs> I walk through the pits and tire smoke about, smoke about knocks me out, <laughs> about pass out. Well, and, and one thing about those two drivers that were winning, I mean, it wasn't the tire right. soak that was winning. Those guys are going to win anyway. Right, yeah. Yeah, they had really good cars and really but, good but drivers. But th- that gives them that little bit of an advantage, and exactly. I think, that, I think yeah. that'll, that'll, uh, I think that'll help it. It may, it may not be. We may be shooting at the wall, but we won't only know. When, you got to try something. Right. Yeah, I mean, you got to throw anything. I mean, it's what uh, somebody asked me one time. Said, what, "What's promoting like?" I said, "It's like throwing darts, and eventually, maybe you'll hit a bullseye." <laughs> I mean, that's what it is. It really I mean, is. You got to try everything there is to try, and yeah. if you don't try it, somebody else is probably going to, and it's going to work. You know what I mean? So, I, I always just tried to put anything out there, craziest, wild, and, and usually it was the dumbest ideas in the world. But, that's that's know. what the fans love to see. Really is. Stupid stuff. Oh, they do. I mean, I hate to say yeah. it, but that's what draws fans. That's why Bowman Gray has fans. <laughs> Stupid stuff. I mean, well, you know, it's the truth. I mean, it's yeah. just, that's a fact. I mean, I I know we're we're offending you, Corey, and we we don't mean to. Not know. offending me at all. <laughs> why do Why did y'all do this whole thing? Because I mean, I've talked to Renee over the years and everything, and Caraway, you know. All of racing's been kind of going down a little bit, and y'all wasn't even sure year to year if he's going to run. And all of a sudden, she messaged me. She's like, "I got this tour. I got this tour." I said, "You've lost your mind, hadn't you? You're going to run like 17 tours next year." I said, "Well, why did y'all decide to take all this on at one time?" Good question. <laughs> you, you still wondering yourself, ain't you? <laughs> yeah, he's still wondering. He's trying to come up with the well, name. No, I, I've got a racetrack. I can't do anything with. Right. I mean, that's sad to say, but a racetrack is not valuable. No racetrack's valuable right now. No, We've got close to $3 million in real money. Well, my dad did. Yeah. Right. And and you, we won't get a third of that if we were to sell today. Mm-hmm. And, yes, it's for sale if someone was to come along, but I don't see that happening. And so we have backed the schedule up to the nine races. Uh, I'm passionate for the Modifieds. I really yeah, am, yeah. and she likes the the Super World. Well, I mean, she likes Modifieds too. Yeah, but yeah. she really liked the Super World, and so that's how that got added this year. Was that she wanted to do that? Uh, David's deal. He come to us. He was wanting to quit, yeah. and we just kind of got that deal. Uh, he, uh, but that that, that six hundred two deal is a good feeder. It's a good I feeder division, and I think it's going to be a feeder for the modifieds. I think yeah. the 602 mods is going to eventually be a feeder for the tour mods. You had like 20 people signed up or something the other day, didn't you? Yeah, there's I mean, a bunch of, right. there's a bunch of people. I won't say names, but right. Well, like Kurt Sheets, big, Kurt Sheets just got him one, I and his brother is going to take the the limited mode. I heard Tim Brown got one. Yeah, I've heard it too. Yeah. So there's, I mean, there's some big names that's going to uh, be running it. But it's reasonable. I mean, yeah. basically ten thousand dollars because a modified chassis is cheap. I mean, compared to you know, you can, there's a lot of older modified chassis you can buy at a reasonable price you know you can buy a 602 motor for what four grand ron mckee got that one modified off a raffle that thing's it's old and he put you know he worked on it and everything and put people in it and they're having a ball on that thing but basically 10 grand you could go racing i mean yeah, yeah. you yeah. you really need to spend a little more than that if you yeah. really want to do it right but i yeah. mean for 10 grand you can go racing with a modified 
and you know tour modified no and right yeah but a 602 <laughs> and, and buy two to three sets of tires all year yeah i mean uh so you know they're 550 or they were 552 last year i think they'll be 560 this year because all tires went up two dollars <laughs> yeah. yeah. they go up two dollars every year it seems like yeah but uh you know uh you buy four in the first race and probably uh, most of the good super limited on the 602 tour so they figured two tires a race but a modified runs half the laps so you know you're looking at probably three sets a year really uh, Brewer uh, you know Brad Robbins he bought about three to four sets last year for that yeah. car and so I mean you know what else can you run for basically hundred dollars a night for tire a tire bill nothing yeah I agree I you, mean I think it's a great car, class. maybe yeah. yeah, you can probably run it a little cheaper. That's about it. That's about it. But, I mean, even the U-cars have got out of hand, you All know, right. the expense of them. I mean, the, back in the day, man, the $500 U-car, man, that was that was yeah. a good time in racing right there. Man. Caraway, <clears throat> Caraway pretty much started that, too. That yeah. was the first was time it, I ever seen a yeah, U-car was at Caraway. Dad went to a, a RPM deal at Darlington, mm-hmm. and he came back and he had the rules, and, and uh, you know, he was he had just started the Friday nights that year. Well, yeah. I think he went down there, like, in May, and he, with the Friday night started the next week or two, and... They they were terrible the first year. I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, and so uh, I said, let's try that. He had them, and he said, well, I, don't know. I said, well, let's just try it and see if it works. So we tried it th- that next year, and it worked, yeah. and it took off. And the the going backwards, the original rules was you throw the. I mean, from where they come from, out somewhere in the Midwest, was you yeah. throw the coin and g- decide which way, backwards or forwards. And Lance just decided before the first race, he said, well, let's just do five front ones and five the opposite way. <laughs> and it was very popular for a while, and yeah. now it's not. But oh, they're too big of crybabies <laughs> now for all that. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. That, that end of the pit wall scared the hell out of me. <laughs> 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 coming off turn well one, coming right. back down straight away. <laughs> yeah, no, no doubt. Um, you may have mentioned, and forgive me if I missed it, but are the Southeast Limiteds are they going to be on F50s too? Yeah. So not just at Caraway, but right. at every race, yeah. you guys run. I think that's great, man. I, I I love seeing the F50 everywhere. I think that's uh, yeah. I think that's going to be big. I, I think the more racetracks that go to that, the, the better off racing is going to be. South South Boston brought it and it turned their whole whole thing around. It really did. Yeah. I mean, you know, they went from having. I mean, and South Boston's always had really good car counts at the beginning and the end of the season, but right in the middle, man, they're down to yeah. 10, 12, 12 11, you know, 13 yeah. cars and. You know, now they don't really have that problem. They don't get down that far. No, it's so. 20 cars every race pretty much. I mean, it's really good. I mean, I went to, you know, three and a half races up there last year, and they were all good. <laughs> yeah. so I yeah. got there late. You know, so I describe it as three and a half. I got I called about, I don't know, 50 laps of a 75-lap uh, late model race, the second one of them. Uh, so, but it was great. I mean, and honestly, I mean, the race, uh, you know, I only made it to one, Caraway once last year. That was the season opening race. It was a great race. I mean, the late model I mean, you know. And that was the thing. I mean, it's so hard to – and I know you guys, you know, work on it all the time. We were working together trying to, you know, get cars and get people and, and do things, and it just seemed like nothing was working. No, I got killed last year the first half of the year, and it, it, it did turn around a lot Yeah. after we cut the schedule back. And I think that's one reason for running one race a month. And as busy as, as she and I both are, it gives us more time to do a better job on those races. Yeah, I, I, mean, I would agree. Uh, you know – well, the uh, more time you have to prepare, I mean, the better you should be. And like me, I've been doing the countdown on Facebook now, I think, since the 27th yeah. day. I've already got all the pictures in my phone, so every morning, like this morning, I forgot it when I first woke up. It was about 8 o'clock when I, f- when I got back from taking press into school. i done mm-hmm. it. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, we've been – we're trying. I mean, yeah. that's all you can do. But, I mean, if you're only doing one a month, it gives you a little more time, which I, in the spring will be a little busy because I've got more modified shows going elsewhere. Right. But when you go somewhere else and you just rent a racetrack, so to speak, that's a little easier. Right. When you walk out the door, that's it. I mean, he's, that man's got to lock the place up, and he's got to clean the mess yep. up. And, yep. And People don't that. understand right. all that. They don't understand the little things that goes into running a racetrack. Most time, I'm, I'm, she'll leave at, like, say, 1 o'clock. Yep. It's 3 or 4 o'clock. Sometimes I don't get home on Saturday night. I'll just get so tired, I'll go in and lay down and get up the next morning because I will not even have everything put up because we own our own records and everything. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, I don't have everything put up in the garage and all yet, so I'll just go lay down and next morning I'll get up and finish it and get home sometime Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, people don't understand that life for sure. <clears throat> Roger, yeah. you, you you look like you uh, got a little too high off that drink no, from Starbucks. No, I'm, I'm interested. It's like... I. Uh, I just, I don't. Oh, he's been thinking this whole time. It's fixing <laughs> Lord to get mercy. <laughs> Something's fixing to happen right no, now. No, I mean, like, I just don't understand. I, 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 what's, give me one thing that, that people at home or listening are like, man, Caraway's doing this. I need to go there. Give me one thing. 
Is it the F50? Is that our big draw? What 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 is going to be your biggest thing that you're going to do this year that you're going to sit back and go, damn it, that was it. I'm that hoping, was it. I'm hoping the Enduro. I like it. I like it. No, I like it. I, that come uh, off the history of Caraway yeah, Speedway. Right. I was going to say, that Facebook page is like the most awesome yeah, page going now. It really is. I mean, yeah. there for a month, that's all I've done, oh, it man. seemed like. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, it was cold weather and, you know. No, for sure. But, uh, they all started talking about it, so I, you know, and I'm sitting here. So I, I consulted with Tommy Whitman, mm-hmm. and Tommy's helped guys over the years and all that. And so he wrote the rules, and he and I would bounce them back with each other. And we kept changing this, changing that, and the pickup truck deal he put in it. I think that's going to be, you know, I hope somebody does it. Yeah. You know, I know a truck costs more. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's harder to find a, a junk truck, so to speak. But For still, sure. uh, I'm hoping that's the thing that can turn it around because I'm telling you. Uh, <laughs> Leslie Ladd worked for Dad. He kind of worked for Dad in 84 or so. And uh, he was going to Greenville helping uh, Gene Painter and Wendell score the Enduros. And he kept coming back and told my dad, he said, you need to run those. That, they'd fill the place up. And my dad wouldn't do it. My dad wouldn't do it. And he finally talked my dad into doing it. And it's the best thing we ever done. It, it drawed the largest crowd. Roger and Langley never said, I've been there. I've seen 110 cars start a race there one time. And it was the greatest thing I've ever seen in my almost life. Seven, honestly, almost 7,000 paid people to the first one, and we didn't, couldn't get them in. They backed up all the way to the interstate. Yeah. And that's four or five miles, all the way to yeah. 311 back then. Yeah. Uh, and Ashboro was having homecoming against Randleman, which is just five miles apart. And I know a guy, he said, I got tired of waiting in line and went to the ball game and come back. We had to delay an hour to get the people in. We didn't nice. even get started at 9 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it, it was a feeder for – for racing later that's what gary yeah. calls got started that's what dan moore got started in right you know it helped feed that they got into it and so i'm hoping i mean and i've tried a couple of things before trying to get the enduro stimulated yeah. but some for some reason that i'm hoping this time maybe we've hit something I and saw, i think i saw gary live better make up three laps under green one time and win one of them and i think tommy whitman uh being involved with it'll help it mm-hmm. and then uh my dad paid an entry for a guy named Darrell Williamson to go run in Duro, Florida, on in the Speed World, like in 87 or 88. It was a $500 entry. He wanted to go do it. Dad said, well, I'll, we'll go do it, and we'll split the winnings. Well, they didn't win, but like 400 Dad said, you just keep it because, you know, they'd spent their money going there and all that. And that's where I got the idea of two scores because we got down there and made us have two scores. So I had to sc- but it was like 400 laps. So that'll help, I think, keep the scoring on us. That's been one of the issues we've always had with the Euros in the past. Oh, yeah. And I'm hoping with two scores we can keep that honest. I don't know if we, I'm not going to guarantee anything, but I think that'll keep it. Yeah. But, you know, put one in here and one over here in another section, and I think that'll keep it honest. It's, it's for sure hard to keep up with because right. I couldn't keep up. I just enjoyed seeing it, but I didn't know who was winning. But, I mean, <laughs> if we can get 50, at least 50 cars, we'll have a good show. Oh, if you have 50, you're going to have a really good show. Yeah. There's no doubt about and, that. And if, yeah. if I can make that work, then that's a feeder for, for weekly stuff and get us going again. Yeah, Brandon Clements uh, jumping in again. He said that he remembers going to one when he was about five years old. Um, one of the most awesome uh, things he ever saw, cars all the way around the track three wide. The largest one was 143 cars. <laughs> that's unreal. Man. 143. <laughs> yes. And all them were big Monte Carlos and stuff yeah. like that back yeah. then. So. Yeah. That's that's the thing I'm hoping that I could, at the end of the year I can say it was successful. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you think it'll be successful year one? I mean, do you think like right off the bat it's going to be successful? Do you think it's going to be a building process? A little bit of both. Yeah. Like I say, 50, if we can hit fifty that first time out the box, then yeah. we, then we're on. A lot something. of people are talking about it. Right. There's that's a the lot thing. Of people now talking right. about it. It's, it's talk about it this time. It wasn't before. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That, that. But that page going back to the Caraway uh, memories page. My gosh, man. For, and you said it for about a month. I mean, and, you know, I wasn't around Caraway back then. Right. I, first time I came there, maybe 2000-something, you know, 99, 2000. But, man, all those old pictures and just knowing all those old names. Yeah, they're great, and, oh, man. So they're great. Cool. Pete Stewart, I love Pete Stewart. my good friend. I realized through that page he's been racing since 1923. <laughs> <laughs> <He has>. Wooden <laughs> wheels. <laughs> Wooden wheels. <laughs> it man has been racing forever. <laughs> no, no doubt about that. No doubt. You, you, uh, you, you talked about. You know, not being NASCAR sanctioned, do you think that cost you anybody? Any racer? No. no. I hate to say it. Yeah. Because when I didn't have but three or four feature division one cars last year, yeah, 
I knew right on Friday night they didn't have where else to go race. I knew I was wasting my money. I'm sure NASCAR yeah. wasn't happy about it because y'all, no. y'all been right. Y'all been tight with NASCAR for a long time, and, 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 and we still have good standings. I mean, yeah. well, as far as you know, I mean, I'm but, sure they understand. And it, it was it's a hard thing to do. And I talked to some of them along the way here and there, you know, and text them and things like that. I mean, and I didn't go to Daytona this year. Well, I didn't go last year. I, I went to the Paving Expo last year and didn't get home in time. And this year, I was so busy with work, I couldn't get gone. But Renee went, and she told me, she said, you know, said, I, I really missed that part of it, not being able to go yeah. over there for them a couple of days that yeah. NASCAR had you there and stuff like that. It wasn't worth what it cost us <laughs> for those two <laughs> days. But, I mean, uh, and I don't mean it bad. And right. at one time, the sanction, you they, you got enough back in sponsor money and yeah. all to, to balance it out. It's not like that anymore. Yeah, it's definitely a different ball game, but I mean, they seem to be working, you know, in the direction of trying right. to fix that. So, uh, but you know, they've got to find a sponsor for the weekly deal too, because this is Williams yeah. last year. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so they don't have it, but it's not easy to find sponsor dollars right now. It's really not. Is that your biggest challenge? Yeah. Yeah. Do you uh, do you have somebody who works on sponsorships specifically? Not, not really. No. And that don't help any either. No. No. Uh, we we definitely hard to pay somebody right. though. Right? Yeah, because, you know, if you do a percentage right now, they're not going to make enough money off of it to do it yep. full time. Yep. And and they're going to get tired really quick. Right, because a lot of no's. Yeah. <laughs> it's a hard – sales is a hard game. I mean, that, that's yeah. – And I'm not a salesman. I'm just not. Yeah. I yeah. mean, and Renee can sell real estate, but she can't sell race sponsors. <laughs> well, <laughs> at least she can sell real estate. Right. That pays pretty good, I believe. Yeah. So. yeah. Speaking of, you talked about the Paven uh, Paven Expo or whatever. Um, tell people what you do. Like, you know, you don't just have the racetrack. You don't just have the tours. I mean, you, you guys have other businesses right. and other things going on. Tell us about that. Well, I started a parking lot sweeping business. Uh, actually, how I got into it was at Kierway, we swept the racetrack with a, with a tractor and broom. But when Dan was at Tri-County, that didn't work because it had the interior wall way around the racetrack. And he was paying this guy to come and sweep the racetrack with a truck, and he was doing a terrible job. So... I decided I was going to buy a sweeper truck, and we'd sweep both racetracks, and I got paid to do Tri-County, so that helped make the payment on it. <laughs> and I started getting accounts, and that's how I got off into doing the parking lot maintenance. Well, when you're doing parking lot maintenance, a shopping center likes to pick up the phone and call Darren Hackett and say, I need this done, I need that done. You know, they're like a one-stop guy because it's normally someone in an office working. They come by once a month or whatever and do a site visit, but they don't want to call 20 people to get something done. So that's how I got off into paving business. And so, and, and then I've got off into grading as well, too. So that's really the, yeah. I still do some parking lot sweeping, but I don't do what I used to do. Yeah. Uh, the trucks have got older, so, and it's hard to keep help on them going out working in the middle of the night. Because I enjoyed it. Because I would normally get up like 2 or 3 in the morning and go do mine. Yeah. And that was my time. You know, right. I, I nobody out there. Yeah, right. yeah, I could work my head. That's yeah. my favorite yeah. time. And, actually, know, me and yeah. Langley talk more at two thirty in the yeah. morning than uh, we do any other time. You yeah. know, and then after my dad retired from the restaurant, I'd call him, and you know, he was a, he would stay up late too. Yeah. So I'd call him, or you know, yeah, and, for sure, and and things like that. That was you know, I could really clear my head good, so I always enjoyed it. Yeah. But I've got off into doing the pavement and grading more. So as you know, it's hard to keep accounts year in and year out. So right. as you they change ownerships and things of that nature and you kind of i haven't really tried to keep it growing because i've grown the other side the paving and grading side of it more but and i really enjoy that and then i farm that's that's what i really love to do is farm i'd rather go to the farm and stay there all the time if you want to the truth but they don't pay the bills so it's about like racing <laughs> now I, I believe renee told me you was doing like some organic chickens or something i'm working at a, another farm been doing grading and all mm-hmm. and they're going to do organic chickens oh, okay. okay they're going to process them themselves and everything when i say organic it's true organic. It's free range. They got these, uh, they're like 30 by 50 chicken houses, mm-hmm. and they move them that plot every day. In other words, the length of that chicken house, they move it every day. Oh, I got you. And it, it feeds off the ground like a range, free range chicken, hmm. and then they're going to have their own processing and all there. And they claim that they're going to be successful at it. I don't quite see it, but they pay good for the work I've been doing. So that's all that matters right there. <laughs> that's all that matters right now. I mean, we built a hundred by four hundred pad for them. We built a a hundred by hundred pad for them. Uh, and how how I met them was I went for a paving job. The lady said I'm gonna pave around a barn, and I I pull up and I'm thinking this is a wasted call. Nobody's gonna spend money to pave around a barn. And mm-hmm. I've been working for three years there now, off and on. I mean, you know, that's awesome. it's my best account. <laughs> yeah. I hate to say it, but it really is. It's turning into my best because they just. You know, it's every month or two we've been doing something. So uh, now, Lightning, David Thomas, yep. he works for you on that side, right? Yep. 
Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought that's what he was telling us that night. That night. I assumed he did not work full time for the racetrack because well, it'd be hard what, to have a full time. Right. Well, that's where we've been the last couple. The last couple of weeks. Well, all about all winter because it's been the weather's been so bad. But, yeah. Uh, but well, we've been doing this other stuff too. But like today, we've been. I bought a. Uh, we were doing a job, mm-hmm. and my dad would kill me. <laughs> 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 the, the people had a Quonson hut. The man had got old and he got in bad shape and he's going to rest home and they, and I bought a whole Quonson hut full of equipment out. I mean, the man had from table saws to automotive equipment, and everything. I've got it stored everywhere at the racetrack. And we got to next week to get it. It's in bathrooms. It's everywhere. So that's what he and I have been doing the last couple of days is trying to get it all out because I didn't hear my dad now. He'd call me Sanford Sons. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> that, that's awesome. Uh, Greg Marlowe wants to know when the Enduro race is. The first one is Friday, May 11th with the, with the first super, with the, the super race at Securaway. Mm-hmm. The next one will be in August the 3rd, I think it is, the, Saturday, the first Saturday in August with the Crash and Burn show. Mm-hmm. And then the uh, third one is the weekend after Labor Day, which I think is like September 7th with the Bowman Gray Stadium night. Yeah. We're doing a BGS night Maybe this Marlo year. Maybe could get an enduro car. I mean, yes. you can't drive anything else anymore. So. Wow. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. I'm, gl- I'm glad he's not here. Yeah, Lenny, Lenny Greg's still a big old man. Yeah. Oh, I know, and I'm probably going to see him soon. <laughs> <laughs> he's, still, he's still a big dude. Don't let him get your yeah. hands. If he, as long as he don't get yeah. his hands on you, you've got a shot. Right? I, I can't run. Okay? If he gets yeah. the meat hook on you, you're I was, in trouble. I was at Hickory last year and watched the cops take him out. Yeah, yeah. ask Nick Payne how yeah. that works out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> talking about Enduros, uh, I'll never forget, it was about 86 or 7, Dennis Setzer lost the Wednesday night show. It, was, it come down to a, a call at the end of the race, and he wasn't coming back. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, he rolls in on Saturday to, to run enduro and drive a, He had a Cutlass Olds, like a, I don't know, an early 80s model Cutlass Olds that he run, and he won the enduro that night. But he would come and run some of them. And the, the guy that worked our, back, our gate back then was Big Larry, and uh, – Oh, he rode him hard. He's, yeah, I thought you would never come back this damn place yeah. again and all that, you know. <laughs> every, every racer that says I'm never coming back is the first guy in the gate the very next week, usually. It really uh, is. That's true. But, uh, I, I, that's what I always tell people first when we first did a racetrack. Yeah. Uh, he's, been, he's been back since. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but the first time we had a racetrack and, you know, Kim's like, well, that guy said he wasn't coming back. I said, yeah, okay. We'll see him next week. <laughs> yeah. He's coming back, I guarantee. Yep, He'll want a test on Thursday. They, yeah. all, they yeah. always do. This was from Wednesday to Saturday, though. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Three days. <laughs> yeah, I have to watch what I say. Greg Marlowe said it's not that far up here. Yeah. So. And he, he, he's got keys, so locking the door ain't doing you no good. <laughs> Can we get a new lock put on there? Oh. <laughs> Don't want to get my ass whipped tonight, I tell you. <laughs> Save that for race season. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> well, t- uh, tell us about the, the season opener. Um, you know, what uh, what you're expecting, you know, as far as, you know, car counts and, you know, what type of race you expect it to be and all that. Well, the headliner will be the, the modified. And it's paying 5000 to win, uh, 500 to start, which the, the normal ones pay uh, 2500 and 450 to start, but it's you know it's we put about four thousand dollars throughout the purse. It's not all on the first place. I mean a lot of it is, but it's not all on the first place. And I'm hoping that'll get us off to a good start. I'm hoping it'll draw some extra cars in. And I hate to say this, but modified racing in the South needs a boost. Yeah. Uh, it needs a feeder, and I think hoping that's what the 602. There's probably not 30 modifieds in the South. Yeah, total. It, not not I was, anymore. I was not just anymore. talking There's with my not. buddy about this today. We, 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 I have a friend from up north, and he, we were just talking about he has a son that races. His name is Andrew Moeller. They, they race SK modifies and stuff up there, and he, wheeling tour things, and, and it's, it's amazing how it's, you know, this kind of had its little swing of heyday where it got some traction, and, and, and now they're just destroying it up there, meaning they got a lot of cars at every race. There's full fields. It's like it, it tried to make it swing to the south, and then it just is really not. It fizzling. is. It's never caught on. Right. The, our biggest heyday with the modifieds was the early '90s with the Smart Tour. You know, we go yeah. to Caraway. I got Jay Hedgecock and Billy Middleton and Junior Miller and everybody and Gary Myers running, and that was the heyday. And that's as big as we because this is this is a fendered, fendered area 
that yeah. modifies just never caught on. And, right. and, there's, and there's no new people coming into it. Right. It's That's, the same people been running for 20 years. There's no new people coming into it at all. Right, and we're losing. We're slowly losing one here, one there. Right. Yeah, but we're, we're not picking nobody right. up. No. That's the problem. No. We lose one, and then we don't pick anybody up. Yeah. And hopefully the 602 mods will, will help do some of that. But that yeah. doesn't mean it will, but that's the, that's the goal anyhow. I hope so. And and there's mods sitting around. There's some sitting around. It's, and it's, modified drivers are the most fickle people. It's hard to get them. It's hard to get them all together and, you know, doing the one thing. But hopefully this will work. You know, and you take like Ace last year done the, the, the Bowman Gray deal in, in October and had, yeah. what, 18? This year they had four. Yeah. You just never know what's going to happen. Yeah, you I mean, don't know. So you can't say that this rule package, that rule package is going to get them there because right. that, that's not the answer. Uh, so hopefully, you know, we can – you know, Randy's been working it, and Renee's been working it some and all, so hopefully we'll have a good field of modifieds. The 602 deal is going to be, I think, good opening night or opening day on Sunday. Uh, the late model sportsman, my goal is 10. I mean, realistically, yeah. I'd love to have 20. I'd be a liar if I didn't, but, I mean, that's yeah. the goal is 10. Yeah. Uh, you got to cry before you. Right. You know, run, and run. a decent mini stock and new car feel, and, and that's what we got. You know, and that's still – Six six divisions. That's a lot of racing doing on Sunday afternoon. Yeah, I agree for sure. All right. Well, <clears throat> anything uh, you think need to talk about that we haven't brought up with you? Not as I know of. <laughs> I mean, you know, I know you're. Uh, you know, you got a lot going on. You know, with all the series and the tracks and stuff. So I didn't know if there was anything else that uh, you know you really wanted to talk about. I mean, you're, and you're welcome to stay. We're going to jump over and talk to Zach Ruinger a little yeah, bit right, here. I'll stay a while. I'll hang around a little while. You're welcome to talk. Uh, you know, with us here, uh, <clears throat> Zach. Uh, we're we're actually going to turn your mic on now, so you can <laughs> talk a little bit. Yeah. Hey, we, yeah. there's yeah. a lot. Well, that's been said. <laughs> I haven't. I say nothing, and it's built up. I'll tell you. <laughs> we were trying to give you a cooling off period <laughs> before we allowed you to. Uh, uh, dive in here. I, I thought somebody just shot me. I, didn't know. <laughs> I, I thought we had an electrical shock in here. I didn't know what the hell was going on. Uh, all right. Well, Bar- bartender is just officially when they think on. It can't get right. worse. <laughs> Where is the beer, by the way? Is there more beer? Yeah, oh, yeah, there's plenty of beer. Oh, they're they're hiding get, it back there in the grandstand. Let's get buck okay. wild. I'm ready to get buck wild. Easy. easy. <laughs> buck wild. Remember when we went there? <laughs> yes, I do remember when we went there. Well, that was the greatest race. Had an Obama ever burger and saw <laughs> buck wild. Guys fighting on a racetrack. Yeah. Right. I showed up there and Corey's like, man, you never heard of buck wild? I was like, no, never heard of buck wild. What's that? He's like, dude, you got to look this up. And he tried looking up on his phone, and it's in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, you ain't getting so no there's service no there. service, <laughs> yeah, and no. he couldn't really show me anything. But it's I looked it up awesome when I got home. Ever been to. Yeah, there was a wrecker pull the, the <laughs> gate open, and yeah. I was like, "Oh yeah. my god!" Spider. I spider. went and raced there. The guy, I, I, I like the guy with the hard hat with the twelve point buck. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> configuration <laughs> bolted to the hard hat drink a beer walking on the pits just loving life man checking oh, yeah. carburetors you know i mean he's doing a little bit of everything you know it's awesome yeah. you uh you never know what you were gonna see there no especially during that period i, it, I think it was a little more tame when you came it, it might have I but i'm telling you it was not still much. a good time Wait, no it was great we've seen a guy get thrown out and never took the hood off <laughs> yeah. Most awesome thing I've ever seen. I sat there. I'm like, man, this guy won the race. This is gonna be good. The guy's like, and you're out. <laughs> he's like, what? Darren, so, Darren has seen things like that uh, in Airway before. I'm like, what just happened? It. He's like, he's out. Franklin County's the only track I seen a guy on pit road. Another guy started ramming him inside until his car flipped off the wall. Because <laughs> just started ramming it until it flipped off the wall. Yeah. Oh man, uh, you can get derailed on Buckwild. Yeah. Did, did was it that time they flipped the the plumbing truck over? Yeah, they did in the drag yes, race. Yes, yeah. right. There. Yeah, you yeah. pay five bucks. Spectator you pay, no, it was free. It was oh, free. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> you you go out on the racetrack, and uh, there was a plumbing truck and with a Dodge full Caravan rack, or something. Right, and he went over, and he went over <laughs> like, <laughs> on the roof. Awesome. That Slide was, for life. That wasn't the first time. Yeah, uh-uh. it was awesome. That's wild. Wow. There was another guy. He used the e-brake and just held it on the wood, I think. That was amazing, too, right? I don't know. It was a, that was a great time. The one race that went down there, um, it, it, I, I don't remember what happened. Some, my, one of my gauges went lit up, said it, I had no oil pressure, and I pulled off. But uh, the four-cylinder races, I'm sitting there waiting for it uh, to get going, and, and guy gets dumped early, just, just dumped. And uh, there's a lot of words being said, and um, – <laughs> Next thing I know, they throw the rag, and they're going back green, and, and this dude's running towards turn three and four with a giant hammer in his hand. He threw it hit the dude in the chest with a hammer. Yeah. yeah. He threw it. It looked like it was in slow motion. Going, and it just hit the dude right in the chest. Yeah. I was there. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. You can't make this then, up. No. Then, then the guy, did he get a fire extinguisher out? And he shot the dude, he shot that, that foam stuff all over the dude that threw the hammer at him with a fire extinguisher. I know, that yeah. was my fire extinguisher. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing I remember about it. That was the greatest yeah. place ever. And ladies and gentlemen, this is just one night we're talking right. about. Yeah, this isn't <laughs> multiple events. <laughs> this is one night. It's uh, something else, for sure. Mm. Uh, anyway. Y- you've had your own experiences, not yeah. at Franklin County, but at Hickory, for sure. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, you know, before mentioned, uh, you know, Roger Pitts, you know, yeah. you had some Roger interesting Pitts. time with him. Yeah. Said so he was going to crash you. Yeah, never did. He <laughs> retired. Never, you put him out of business, didn't you? Yeah. 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 <laughs> he came and ran his mouth to you, you put him right out of business. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Said I would never finish a race the next year, and, uh, yeah, he... What never showed back up. So. Oh. Yeah. You laying it down to him right now? Yeah. I mean, if he wants to come I back. Well. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, that, that's one thing I'm saying about Zach. He'll tell you before the race what he's going to do. And he really does <laughs> everything he says he's going to do. <laughs> he does it. Wow. Well. So. And I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get the name No Talent Motorsports for no yeah. reason. I can yeah. tell you that now. Yeah. But but speaking of, where did you get the name No Talent Motorsports? That, Somebody else had to give that to no, you. No, that interview. <laughs> well, no. So uh, I used to work for Jamie Yelton. Uh, which I'm, is, I'm sorry. Yeah, everybody <laughs> says the same exact thing. Uh, worked with him for a couple of years. And um, so uh, Chris Lawson, Tic Tac, and I used to stay up all night you know hours of the night yeah. he was working on bassett's car and i was working on my car that uh yelton let me keep there and uh so jamie kept on saying we're me and uh tic tac were a bunch of no driving mfers couldn't drive couldn't you know terrible tic tac couldn't drive yeah <laughs> uh, he won a couple of races he won a couple of races <laughs> one of the greatest races i've ever seen in my life was yep, tic tac and matt mccall at tri county yeah. side yep, by side the last 30 laps yeah. doc love was on the call for that race yep, yep. Yeah. Uh, that's actually the first race I ever seen him race. Um, and so when I worked for Jimmy Means uh, for a couple of years before Yelton's, they're all there in Four City. Yeah. Uh, Chris Lawson actually came and drove for us for a couple of races. Mm-hmm. I remember them. And um, so I was telling him I had late mile stock. He's like, man, you know, I, I race mine some. He said, you know, what kind of chance you got, this, that, and the other. And he said, I'll, I'll be glad to help you. So that's how I got hooked up with them and stuff. And um, funny story, when... I started working for Yelton. We had uh, Nick, uh, Quick Nick, I can't remember his last name, uh, Hutchins. Um, yeah, 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 Nick yeah, Hutchins. Yeah, yeah, Nick Hutchins. Things just weren't working, um, and one car was winning and the other car wasn't. So um, basically I kept telling Jamie, I said, hire Chris Lawson. I'm telling you, he's good. He's good. And uh, my buddy Josh Brichette, went, we went on a, uh, uh, a trip to go get a car for Yelton. He buys and sells stuff all the time. Yeah, yeah. And um, went on a trip, and we were sitting there talking all the way up to, I don't remember where we went, but I uh, said, man, you got to, so he calls him. And one race deal, let's see how it goes. And it went well. And uh, so that's where he started working for Bassett's at, uh, uh, for Yelton. So, so But that's where we got the no talent was from Jamie. Uh, from Jamie. Yep, he kept Imagine on saying that. we were no drivers, no drivers. So. Fathead racing himself. Yep, yep. yep. <laughs> so me and Tic Tac. If anybody said, knows a no driver, it would be it him. Would it be would be him, him. yep. <laughs> <laughs> so. God. Yeah. That was brutal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jason, Big Jason's brutal. on here, so he'll oh, tell good. him about yeah, it. We'll, we'll <laughs> oh, man. Big Jason, yeah, this, I ain't going against Big Jason. <laughs> no. No. Hell no. You're on your own. You're on your own. <laughs> no, man. You get your butt whipped for sure. Oh, with yeah. I'm not even saying nothing. He just wins. <laughs> so, good dude. Yeah, Big Jason's a great guy. Yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah, he's a really good dude. Can't believe he yeah. hasn't choked Yelton. Yeah. <laughs> he he may have. Yeah. He, he may have let him off the <laughs> record. <laughs> right. yeah. Off the record. Yep. Yeah. He has several times. He just you know like last breath lets him yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. they're back alive. <laughs> yeah, Mister No Talent over. He's racing. He racing. He, he only raced every once in a while, and then he messaged me one day. He said, "I'm gonna race an Xfinity car." I'm like, "Yeah, whatever." <laughs> <laughs> so I turn on TV and I look. I said, hey, "How much have I been drinking today?" Because <laughs> there's this dude on TV, man. He is on. He's racing Xfinity. I'm so what, drunk, what, Zach Brunninger <laughs> is on TV Jesus. in the Xfinity race. <laughs> in an Xfinity race? I said, he wasn't lying to me, my gosh. Yeah. That was pretty cool, though. <laughs> that was. Um, so when I moved down here, my whole uh, idea, what I wanted to do was race. I wanted to be able to drive whatever I could. Um, 
And oh, there's the picture. Yeah, <laughs> appreciate it. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, well, tune I, in, <laughs> everybody. Tune in to the live. <laughs> well, you got to <laughs> deal right now. You, you got to tell us about this picture because <laughs> we're we're trying to figure out if you were shooting a porn or what was going on. I mean, uh, uh, racing calendar or what? What was it? So, um, Three Aces Media actually uh, took that picture. I, I did a, a, f- a photo shoot at the uh, uh, Days of Thunder Barn. And I was trying to do it for hero cards. GQ? Yeah, no. well, it's... No. <laughs> so she's like, oh, just do this that one. Was and Tinder, that was Tinder, wasn't yeah. it? That <laughs> was <laughs> Tinder right there. That was the Tinder site before <laughs> your life. Where, where, where was you giving these out at? New Kids on the Block? <laughs> 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 that one didn't make it <laughs> to the hero card. Uh, wow. It's really, you? it's really hard sitting beside you right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't yeah. really sit here. <laughs> your 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 buddy over here in the crowd, Stephen. He uh, <laughs> he he said that was eighty pounds ago. <laughs> yeah, that was about seventy eighty pounds ago. Yeah, he's not lying on that one. <laughs> so glamour wow. shots right there, baby. <laughs> uh, now that we're interrupted, Ed, you can go back to your nationwide. Story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, basically, um, I started uh-huh. working for Jamie El- or for uh, Jimmy Means, and uh, if anybody doesn't know Jimmy, um, awesome guy. Um, he's been around the sport for a long, long time, was one of the best independents there was. Um, and, um, I learned a lot from, him. I worked on dirt cars before. That's, that's all my experience was. Um, and the first thing he had me do was hop underneath the car and take the transmission out. And I was like, all right. And, uh, literally dropped it on my face. So <laughs> big old cut on my chin, you know, it legitimately <laughs> dropped it on my face. Um, but, uh, I, I spent a week, I took a week off of school. Uh, went down and, and worked for him, went to Watkins Glen and, and had an awesome time. And so graduated high school, moved down here, started working for him. And I asked him, you know, how, how do you start able to start driving? And he said, well, there's a process and this, that, and the other. And so around when Tic Tac come along, um, I started every, every driver uh, we ever had, I asked that, how did you start driving? How did you start to, to get to this point? And, um, they all kind of said the same thing you know you just start driving and eventually you do it uh but they never mentioned the money aspect on it so yeah i'm just still at this point young kid i'm like man I, if i can get bad if i can get good i'm, I'm just gonna somebody's <laughs> gonna pick me up yeah. uh but that didn't you know that's not the way it works so <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. so as, as as that kind of started coming to realization uh i still wanted to be able to do it though and um so I ended up uh, getting a late model, and uh, it was limited late model. Ran, I don't know, probably six races, and Jimmy had an ARCA car um, that was <laughs> repoed. Uh, the guy, <laughs> <laughs> the guy, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, basically uh, paid Jimmy to take it to Daytona for him and crew it and everything, and it didn't uh, work out. And the bills didn't get paid, so the car stayed at Jimmy's. And Chris Lawson needed his approval. Um, and Brad Means, uh, his son, Jimmy's son, wanted to do it. So I said, if I get approved uh, for ARCA, would you allow me to drive it? And he said, oh, yeah, you just sure, whatever. You're just trying to blow me off. Yeah. Well, I lied on my resume a little bit here and there. <laughs> and four-banger dirt car ended up being late model dirt experience. And long story short, I got approved. <laughs> four, four or five limited races in uh, asphalt experience, and I got to go uh, drive the ARCA practice uh so that's that was a tough fun. approval process yeah, yeah. right there <laughs> <laughs> well you've seen some of the others right like <laughs> well, <laughs> yes I mean, that's all i'm saying <laughs> and i was actually faster than uh chris lawson um so that's your claim to fame yeah it was that, a claim <laughs> to fame i i literally came back into the stall and jimmy's sitting there doing just like bowing down to me and i'm like what's he trying to do tell me to slow down so i grab a whole handful of brake and knock it out of the gear and I, I stalled it i mean right there stalled it and uh so I get back, they push it back in there, and he yanks the winter net down and yanks me by my collar. And I'm like, man, he's mad. I did something wrong. <laughs> and he shoves a stopwatch in my face. He said, you were just faster than Chris. <laughs> so cool, man. Uh, so that was exciting. Um, and then so I get to just keep knocking out late mile stuff. And then uh, my job was going well, and I got a uh, K&N car. Uh, bought it, used. It was old junk um, and kind of made it work. And... Uh, the motor uh, I bought, I uh, took it to the motor man because you never can trust anybody that what you're buying. And he said, nah, I got bad news. I said, what's that? And he said, this thing's wrong. And he, said, he said, you're going to have to pay like five or $6,000 from your heads. 
I said, I ain't got that. He said, well, if you're going to be wrong, might as well be really wrong. <laughs> I said, "All right, let's do it." <laughs> so, uh, wait, this guy thing. <laughs> we're gonna try to run eleven. <laughs> Just so you know, we're gonna make it up to eleven, <laughs> and we're gonna pray we're not the random. Yep, <laughs> those are the two 100%. things. We gotta be eleventh yep. and not the random. <laughs> yep. So, um, random. All right, um, and got the approval that they're done and. Um, Jimmy called me up like a year later. I'm like, man, I just spent all this money, and he's not going to let me do this. And uh, he gives me a call about a year later and says, hey, you still driving? I said, yeah. And he said, uh, well, we, I need a driver for Iowa. So that's where I ran the, the K&N race at, one of them. And um, so I got to go do it. And it was a starting park, but it was still a good time. And something some people don't get to do, you know. Oh, yeah. So for especially sure. with, I mean, I, I race on an extremely tight budget. I mean, as a lot of racers do, I don't want to try and be like a, you know, a, a, oh, I'm broke, broke, broke. You know, anybody that races isn't really broke. They just right. <laughs> don't have a big racing yeah. budget. That's right. Um, so, but, um, so, it, it, I didn't pay five, six thousand, ten thousand dollars to go, you know, do Xfinity. It was just Jimmy uh, appreciated, I guess, the hard work I did. I don't know. He just, so I was very grateful. He's trying to make up for it. that transmission. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that's what it was. So didn't work at workers comp claim. Yeah. <laughs> so well, just so you know, if you run any Southeast Limited light model race this year, <laughs> they're gonna be looking at your car. <laughs> 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 you you got to watch who you talk around. Though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was. Let me clarify. That was the K&N East motor that's now sold and long gone. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that was the better of the options I had, so that's that's what I took. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I figured an 18-year-old car that used to be a, a Martin Truex car, actually, uh, it was a, a Bush Martin Truex car. Um, I figured that was, you know, I think it was, it was like generally 13, yeah. 14 and, and, years old. In all, in all seriousness, you've been always took a bunch of nothing and made a lot of something out of it. Yeah. And you have ever since I've known you. And, and that comes from Jimmy. Jimmy means, I uh, always used to, I don't know if I can cuss on here or not, but I used to say turn in chicken salad, or chicken shit and a chicken salad. Yeah. And um, that's that's what I learned, honestly, the most from Jimmy uh, was that. Yeah. And um, we've just always done what we can do and how you know how we could do it. So. Yeah, and, 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 and you've had fun doing it. Yeah, and I've had a blast doing it. And yeah. that's what I think we, we uh, a lot of people have lost. Um, we've got to make the racing product for us drivers. We can go spend our money a lot of ways. Right. And we're spending a lot of money. Whether you're low budget or not, you're still spending a lot of money. You can go buy a bass boat and, you know, <laughs> rod and reel for a lot less money and go kick every, you know, every Saturday out on the lake. Right. Um, so yeah, but you would spend a lot more, too. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> There's some big bass boats out there, just so you know. <laughs> but we got to make it enjoyable for, for people to want to be able to do that, uh, to go spend our, our Saturdays at the racetrack. So, And I appreciate uh, tracks like yourself trying to do that with the F50s. I've never personally raced on them. I've heard good and bad about them. But anything, I hate the scuff game. I hate it. I ran it for a long time at Hickory. Uh, in other places, and not talking junk about any track, but it why does it suck? Tell me why. What's your number one big thing? What's the reason why it sucks? You don't know what you're getting. No idea. No, uh, not a clue. Paying two fifty, you have no idea what you're getting. Exactly. When I could spend three fifty and get two right side tires, and know what I have every and week, would and would rather do it. And would rather do it. Now I don't know if everybody would rather do that, but I think if we could convince everybody to do that. What do you think? What, what same thing. You, most of your customers, yeah. same thing. I mean, you know, the hundred sixty dollars for a set of scuffs, but. 160. You, you, is that what do they cost at Hickory? 150. 150. But you can't you can't control what you give you. I mean, mm -hmm. we can we, we do the best we can. The best you can. You know, we do what, what we know is an A tire, B tire, C tire, or mm -hmm. A, B, two C's, and a right. D. Yeah. We, we yeah. used to do right. five to a set to give them an extra one. But sure. I mean, uh, we don't know what we got. And I mean, whole, I hate to say it, but we don't. And the whole thing is, I've talked to racers before, and once they got them, your whole day sucks. Yeah. You know, that's it. Yeah. Your whole day is, is wasted. And, it's going to suck. And normally, someone got a better set than everybody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And and the hard part is is you can put all that time and money and go and practice and and I mean I used to have old tires from from teams or whatever we got them, but I would let them sit out in the sun and out in the weather <laughs> and everything just mimic everything you that you could and, and you, you still, still can't you know. right. and, and then you say okay well we gotta have new tires because if you have your car good on new tires then whatever the junk tire is you can just you know adjust with tires but that still will throw you for a loop I mean it's just yeah. 
we at Greenville last year uh, it was four tires for the first race, and then it was two tires after that. Yeah, uh, and that's and in the limited division. In the limited division, and that was awesome. Yeah. Um, and honestly, I think that tracks need to go late model two tires every week and limiteds one tire every week. Because honestly, Greenville took a cut in cars this year. I don't last year. I don't know if it was um, because of the tire deal or if just some people what decided they were. Uh, what do you mean? The limiteds went from twenty twenty five, I'd say, in twenty sixteen or twenty seventeen. Then twenty eighteen, I had like fifteen eighteen. So it still wasn't bad car count. Yeah. You know what no, I mean by any means. No. But I did see a, a few stop coming. So, um, but what I did like about Greenville was if you could, if it was two or. Meaning, if you couldn't buy two, like you said, they'll still let you come. Yeah, we're, we're gonna try it and see. I mean, it mm-hmm. may it may not work. You know, we may have to go to the two only or whatever. But mm-hmm. I mean, because you need to still sell tires. Yep. You don't you don't want everybody get to come, not buy any tires. But yep. I mean, we got to try something to get cars back. So let me ask you this: uh, a one tire deal for limited uh, that that's bringing in revenue for one tire, obviously per car, um, and you're keeping the tires there. I'm assuming you'd keep everybody's yeah. tires there. Um, so, the markup on the used tire deal is—is is it? Do you have, do you have to pay people to get those A, B, C, D tires knocked out? Yeah, yeah, now you do. You so, can't get free tires anymore. Nope. So that amount of money plus buying tires from from tracks and stuff used to, or from the cars too, or wherever you're buying them from, would you not be better off just doing a one tire deal? The only experience I've had with the one tire deal is when I did the modified lights at time, and a one tire deal was hard to manage. Really? Yeah. <clears throat> that's a uh, motor mile used to do a one tire deal i think mm-hmm. and it's hard to manage and if you come manage. in off cycle it's hard to get i mean it's really mm-hmm. hard to manage gotcha uh and when i modified it wasn't as bad because i modified don't use but three tires really anyhow mm-hmm. uh but i i'm not sold on a one tire deal gotcha. i mean i'm really not yeah but i mean and the two tire worked great last year at, at, at uh, greenville uh, yeah. But, like I said, I just figure if maybe if you could cheap it, make it a little bit cheaper yet, you'd get those last four or five cars back. See, that's that's <laughs> something we're not getting. I don't know if you've noticed it, Langley, but we're not getting these guys that just come to be a part of the race anymore. We've yeah. lost those guys. Yeah. Why? Uh, yeah. I don't Why? know. I, I'm going to use an example for a guy named Larry Ruth. He never bought any tires. He always got tires off somebody or something. He would get lapped four or five times. I mean, he had a late model. Mm-hmm at the end before he quit he'd get lapped four or five times in a night in a 50 lap show but he just come to be a part of it. that was his hobby yep mm-hmm. i mean yeah racing's everybody's hobby but i mean mm-hmm. he knew he wasn't gonna win but we've lost those we don't have people that just don't want to come say well i'm just coming to be there if they don't feel like they can win they don't come anymore yep. have you guys noticed that oh I yeah and I, I, i've always said the guy running 15 is just as important as the guy winning the race yep he's but, just as important to everybody yeah, hold on there. I, I i like this I'm mm-hmm. ready. <laughs> yeah. So here's my question to you. I'm going to flip it and ask you the question because I really okay. want to know. So what are you doing to get him there? That wasn't really that wasn't meant. It was no, any I know. haste. I, 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 I don't really like. Know. This is what I want to talk about on this platform, and mm-hmm. I, I I want to talk about. Hey, you've been doing this an exceptional long time with some success. Your father had success. Your whole family's in this business. Blah 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 blah. I'm cool with it. I think it's great. My question is, what are we doing? I, I hear, and, I, and I'm not going to call anybody out because I don't mean it that way, but I, I, I get to talk to a lot of promoters, and they, like, they all tell me this stuff. And then I say, okay, great. So you're not getting the, the bottom guy is what you're calling right. him, which I think is kind of bull anyway. I'm not going to swear because I'm not allowed anymore. <laughs> but I think it's bull anyway. We're not getting the, the let's call him the local racer. Right. Let's call, let's yeah. give him some other name. But I've asked everyone, every promoter, the same question. Like, what are you doing to get him? Yep. And they all say the same thing. Nothing I advertise in a newspaper. <laughs> well, I, great. Well, I, I don't mean I advertise it. in yeah. a newspaper. <laughs> newspaper is Like, is I flipped out of my mind. Yeah. I, it was, yeah. I'd like, so I'm cool with, I think that's a problem too. Yeah. Yes, yes. I, as a guy that's invested in the same business with you, I think that's a problem. My question to you is... What are you doing to get them back? Well, I'm hoping this tire situation for like for the late model will help. I mean, yeah. really, but, but I don't I don't really know how to get them back. Mm-hmm. I think he's embarrassed. I do too. Like I I will tell you this, and I think it's been great, and I'm not afraid to tell anybody that I want people to start doing this. If you don't communicate well with me, or you can't understand the things I'm telling you, I have more people since we started this show five or six weeks ago reach out to me on Messenger and say, "Hey, man, you said something I didn't understand." Or something is said that, hey, I'd like to know more about. Or they reach out to you. I think 
the problem is when you get them at the racetrack, it they get embarrassed. Nobody helps them anymore. Agreed. Yeah. Right? Like, oh, I'm afraid that they're gonna somebody's going to ask me what Domex truck arms are, and I'm not going to have any idea what they are, and then I'm going to feel stupid. Because we don't help that guy anymore. We don't yep. do anything to educate him. That's true. And certain, certain tracks are like that, but then there's tracks like, I think, Caraway and Ace. It's always been a big family. You walk down pit road, and anybody will help anybody right. at those two tracks. Go to South Boston, Motor Mile. Eh, you ain't getting, you know, Philip Morse ain't coming over to work on my car. But, <laughs> you, know, you know, I just don't know what we're doing to save those little guys. I, I can tell you what Performance Center is doing. Performance Center, now I am spending an exceptional amount of time giving it away, meaning I now talk with people on the phone for probably way longer than I should <laughs> about exactly what it is because I want you to understand because if you understand, you can get where you need to go. Yep. But if you don't feel like you can talk, Langley and I talked about this often. I think that we've separated that guy that's not the full-time racer, and we've put him so far out to pasture that we've alienated him. Then we get pissed because we can't figure out why he don't come back. <laughs> well, that's like everybody wants to talk about bump stops and all and shocks, but, but how, how are you going to control it? If you've done away with it, how are you going to control it? I mean... Honestly, uh, I mean, it's here. We can't stop the technology. Yep. Yeah, I'll admit the guy that don't know nothing about it, he's lost. Mm -hmm. yep. But how are we going to control it? I mean, how can we do anything to make it better? I mean, I don't but know. That's where Roger just come in. Like you said, he's paying, he's staying on the phone with them, helping well, them. We to gotta help people, right? Because we have to pe doing. help people understand. If they don't understand, they're not gonna go. Yep. That's it. Like if 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 a guy doesn't think you've already said, if he doesn't feel like he can go and somewhat compete, then he's not going to go. Yep. He's going to stay home and buy a bass boat or do whatever. <laughs> right. So the more I think, th and this is the thing that I think I, I challenge racetracks to do, let him test for for free. Mm -hmm. Let him do whatever. Because if they don't, like if we don't start to cultivate relationships mm -hmm. somewhere between the guys that build the cars, the media, the racetracks, the drivers themselves, th if we don't start to build some kind of commonality, we're beat. That That's was actually it. one That's of my it. questions I had. I had notes. As he brought his we, own question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> How do Speaking we, of going off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> I told you this might be the last episode, man. Corey called it. <laughs> uh, but, but how do we make our product more attractive? Uh, how do we make our product uh, more attractive money to make? Oh, God, I'm off. How can we make <laughs> you our product right better for you. <laughs> to attract more money? To the track, like uh, like the crawl dads, like they're I mean what single A double A baseball team, and they they get decent people there. They got crowds and hey, stuff thanks. coming. Yeah, he just got his beer taken away. So <laughs> yeah. there you go. Thank you. We but got a winner. How do we make what we're doing more attractive to get more people into the stands or and, and all around? More people in, more sponsors, more sponsors, more money for us racers. I think everybody's trying to mm -hmm. find ways to do that. I think you know one problem we have is I mean going to the racetrack, it's loud. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's very loud at a racetrack. The average person today doesn't enjoy that that much. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You go to a baseball game, it's not that loud. You go sit out back and drink beer and talk to your buddies, yep. you got no problems. Well, mm -hmm. I just you think know? there's so many more things to enjoy. And I've said this before, Americans in general, we're lazy now. We can sit <laughs> on a computer or watch no, a TV. We are. And, 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 and they don't go nowhere. You've got to give them a reason to get out. You can sit there and watch Fans Choice on TV and watch the race. Or you could spend eighty dollars taking your family out, dragging about, putting in the car, put gas in the car, feeding by, and get them there. Well, since you, had, you said that, I, I, do you think that people stay at home to watch mm -hmm. fans' choice versus going to a racetrack if they have the opportunity? If 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 they really wanted to go to that race and they said, oh, well, you know, Philip Morris gonna be here and we're you know we're gonna go this race, but if it's just a weekend and you're busy and stuff going, I'm like, nah, I'm just gonna hang around. I the don't house. think you're going to the racetrack anyways if you're busy and. You know, I don't, mm. I don't think it matters. But I'm just saying, we used to, that that, that was a ritual. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Right. We used to oh, well, we get, get forward to going to the racetrack on Saturday night, going right. to Caraway Speedway every Saturday night. Yeah, but it night. was social. Mm -hmm. right. Right. Yeah, it was social, yes. though, right? That's, you hung you know, out with like, all yeah, your buddies. Back, right. in, back in Darren's day, you know, watching his dad, I mean, they raced every Saturday night. 40. Yeah. Every well, Saturday. we're not doing the Friday, 10, Saturday, 43 yep. or 46 nights a week. But my, my, my nephew works for Nichols Dodge, and he was in training last week, week before, we were for training. Mm-hmm. 50% of the world population is under 30 years old, he told me. Wow. 50%. So how and – that, and that's what we're not attracting. We're not attracting the people under 30 anymore. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to grow the sport when half our population is under 30? Oh, 
Miley Cyrus in concert for the race. I don't know. What we and you know, I mean, what, I don't, you know I mean, what else? You know what else? Only, you only Corey's going to Miley yeah, Cyrus. Right. I mean, I don't, <laughs> who cares? Yeah. I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't know. I don't know no, the answer but, to it. But like, so no, I think it's wrong. I, I, I think yes, that could be true. But you're telling me people don't want to watch people beat the shit out of each other. I said it. Sorry, I'll pay the fine. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to see people beat the shit out of each other. At Bowman Gray Stadium? No, mm-hmm. they do. The mm-hmm. problem is nobody Obviously. wants to watch the product because it's not relevant. Mm-hmm. The product sucks so bad. Nobody want, and I'm not putting it to bash it. I'm saying it honest. When when things are good, people want to go watch them. Mm-hmm. If they're not, they don't go. Yeah. That's that's as cut and dry as it can be. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. if if it, it people think, "Oh my god, they just started winning." No, they didn't just start winning. They've been slowly winning over and over and over. Like you don't expect 50,000 people to be right. at your next race. Mm-hmm. That's just not where you're at. Right, like it's not going to happen. I, I wish it can happen. I'll oh, do whatever yeah. I can yeah. to help you happen. But it's it, you're not going to go from two thousand to fifty or sixty, barring something happening. So where do we bridge those gaps in it? Like, w- I think the race we all have to get together and figure out to make the racing more enjoyable or more entertaining. People will come. Like, but if it sucks, nobody's going to come. No, nope. like. Right, it's not that hard. No, no, I, get, I yeah. mean, <laughs> but none of our feeder divisions, like like Bowman Gray, they're down to thirty mini stocks and was having sixty five years ago. Right. Yeah, exactly. none of our feeder divisions are working anymore. No. So I don't know what the issue is to it, but that's where you get a guy. He, like you said, you start on dirt on a four cylinder. Yep. You get that guy in something like that, and, you, and the ones that can come up with money and love it, yep. keep doing it. And we're yep. we're we've we're losing something, and I don't know what how to fix it and i don't think anybody yeah. really does i mean exactly there's a lot of things but have a have a great product have a have, have a well-run show mm-hmm. if you have a well-run show people come back i've noticed that yeah, at different shows not the same i don't think the people the person going to the racetrack right now does not want to see the same product that his father right. put out that's not right. him yeah. if you if you think you're going to build no. it around how he did it you right. lost no. because he don't want to see that he wants to see monster trucks and dirt bikes and shit <laughs> yeah. blasting off and it's, fireworks it's, it's a different people a like winger drama. cover people band love drama yeah. and today. The junk shows, we know that. Right. It works. Oh, 100%. Right, so my, yep. but my question is, why is racetracks, do we don't realize that we should do junk shows and then realize that the race cars could be like, maybe we could build racing through mm-hmm. the junk shows. Around it. Mm-hmm. Right, like we could get people coming because we know the junk shows work, right? Like there's, right. You, nope. you say they're standing in the parking lot. Greenville says that they're standing Hickory, in the parking mm-hmm. lot. Hickory, Kevin says they're standing in the parking Okay, so w- we know that's working, mm-hmm. right? The racer bitches, oh, it's tearing up the racetrack. Blah, 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 I'm pissed off, right? <laughs> He's great. coming anyway. So right. yeah. I, I don't give a damn, right? So I wanted to address that. So why does he not – at what point does he not use those monster jams to try to advertise no talent motorsports – Kick flipping into somebody else's <laughs> window net, <laughs> right? Yeah. Why, like, how do you not do that? <laughs> That's I, I, twenty. Pi- yeah. Like, no, let's do nothing in front of fourteen hundred. <laughs> Woo! This was great. Yep. They're all separated by a half a lap. Who gives a shit? <laughs> and that's the biggest thing is we enjoy a race that's yep. side by side. Yes. And they might yes. beat off of each yes. other, you know, a little bit. Mm-hmm. And yes. We enjoy that. They not don't. Everybody does. Yep. You know, and the Nobody majority does. of people today do not. Mm. So the tracks are uh, like so. Uh, what track is it that has the, the actual screen on the backstretch now? Has place to go eat inside? Dominion. Uh, Dominion. Dominion. Yeah. yeah. That they're cultivating, they're cultivating their business. You can call it a business. Cause that's what it is. It they is. have a business plan. That's what well, it it's is. actually about seven businesses. Yep. But they're dr- they're bringing people in from all different things and say, oh, man, not. I wonder what this track they, they have about, business right? parties and all sorts of yeah. different stuff. They have a bar and all sorts of stuff. The, the game has changed. Yep. I mean, look at Carteret. Carteret is always going to have about the same amount of fans or a little bit more because yeah. it's an it's an entertaining place to go. There's like 12 places to buy beer around the racetrack. <laughs> mm-hmm. You can literally walk across as a fan from your ticket. You can literally walk across the track, across their little walkway, mm-hmm. go down in and go into the restaurant and hang with the drivers. I, yep. wa- I walked in there and I missed mean, the first 40 laps of racing. I looked outside and said, there's race cars here. I didn't know it was a rally <laughs> track. Corey, let, let, let's be honest. Right. You missed the whole damn <laughs> right. race. No, okay. I got your photos. Now listen, listen. Right. I got your photos. When the night was over, you had taken 37 photos in eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just go ahead and tell you, you missed the whole damn race. And, and 15 <laughs> of them were his I was going to say, dude, they were on burst. It was one, <laughs> oh, we're good here. And we're 
we're going in. And, back and in that the- was by accident. Yeah. <laughs> we're just going to go ahead and t- <laughs> Nobody wants to see those. <laughs> <laughs> Him and Steven Sanders in there. I'm not really sure if Steven was drinking before or after the race. I'm no, not really sure. Steven, it, was, it was Jason York, but anyway. Well, him too. <laughs> no, no, that's the one later. You don't remember Steven being in there. <laughs> that's how long, how many beers ago that was. <laughs> but, I mean, that's the type of atmosphere that's yeah. going to have to happen. It, we need a culture change at these mm-hmm. racetracks. Not necessarily we need to keep the racing product that we have now for the people that we have going to the racetracks now but we got to add stuff to it we got to do different things we got to have other offerings at the track and it's hard to do i mean you own the track it's paid for it's hard for you to go in there and go i'm gonna build me a bar over here because i think it's gonna draw (laughs) me some more people so i'm gonna spend twenty five thousand thirty five thousand fifty thousand whatever the number is and i'm gonna hope this works that's hard to not work yeah Yeah. you never know and like so something as simple as christmas lights i mean i know i noticed anthony anders been doing that um uh, me and Steve had actually talked about that a couple years ago. We asked uh, Matt Piercy, why don't they do some kind of Christmas show, a Halloween show? Like, those places make stupid money. Halloween, people love going to, to haunted houses. They have the buses already there for the for the demolition derby shows and stuff. Yep. L- I mean, line them up and have a, a haunted trail. But yep. each track should be doing something... Oh, each track should be doing something to keep cultivating people. So yep. if you're a year round... Yep. So it's as easy as doing some kind of Halloween show, Christmas lights. Uh, I mean, uh, you concerts. mentioned Dominion. Yep. Dominion yeah. does a zombie apocalypse yeah. thing. I didn't even know that. Me about that. They take yeah. the buses yeah. out, and you yeah. know they yeah. can shoot zombies that come up, and uh, you know you have to think outside awesome. the box. Now you can't just say, yeah. "Hey, I have a racetrack. I have six races. Come see it." Yeah, exactly. You, you've got to do something different. You got to bring the people. You got to have a, a, some kind of other draw other than just racing. Racing. There, there exactly. is no racetrack. Strictly a racetrack making money today. Right. Agreed. None. And, and to offset the loss that, maybe that they might have on the racing mm-hmm. side, make more money on that other stuff. To, I mean, I, I, that's what my track, my home track did in Illinois. Uh, they had a Christmas deal, and that the Christmas lights brought a lot of money. How many hours a week do you think you work at the racetrack? <laughs> He's trying to add them up in his head right now. Yeah, that wasn't a dog. No, I know it's not. <laughs> Uh, like probably seventy five hours the week yeah. you're gonna do a show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then like not doing them all the time, it won't. But the morning all doesn't change, right? I mean, whether you run one race a year, right? Or you run, right. Sure. You know, you yeah. Still you, gotta cut the grass at least once a month. Yep. It's gotta be at least sure. once a month, or you get yeah. to looking so bad did, that. <laughs> did you think it was easier when you raced every week? Yeah, and it's easier to get help too. Yeah. I know you think that's crazy. Yeah. I, no, it is. I agree. I agree, hundred percent. It's weird how that works. People today go, well, oh, i got to schedule you know, less races so my, f- my employees can go on vacation. No, man, you make this priority. Well, I, I, I think people are used to uh, People get used to showing up every week and doing yes. a job than trying to get them there once well, a month. Well, really, you need to race weekly to get the people in the habit of coming to the racetrack every mm-hmm. week. Yeah. But we don't have enough equipment now right now to race weekly. You don't have enough racers that can afford to do it. Right. That's, that's the yeah, biggest that's the thing. And that's where I think you know, diversity in the Do you think racers want to do it? Because I think there's this inherent amount. This is something that I've been trending lately, trying to add the numbers together. Langley gets pissed at me because I always want to know the analytics. And I think there's an overwhelmingly large group of racers that really only want to race one to two times a month. I agree. And they want it to just be enjoyable and fun for them. I think that there that is going to be the win that you're looking for, mm-hmm. right? That, that Sunday maybe win. Um but I think there's a huge group that's looking for that. They don't have, you know, two hundred thousand dollars a year to spend. They want to do it with their buddies, and they want to drink some beer in the pits when they're done, and they want to have a good time and do some camaraderie and hang out, and their wife and kids and stuff come. And they, and I think he exists. And he I, does. I think he, there's there's a group of people that are looking for that that have trouble intermingling into like a a hickory 28 races or uh yeah. you, you, they have they have a hard time they, they can't fathom doing that that's way too much that they want to do but you can solve that by mm-hmm. having the right divisions and having the right you know break it up like you said you know you're gonna have some of those crash and burns uh, mm-hmm. you know anthony anders is gonna have some you know dirt Listen, bike I'm events you, with his races this anders. year um you know there's just all kinds of things that you can do to get it back to where it's weekly you know what i mean and i, I know it's a challenge so don't you right. you mm-hmm. know i know and I, i'm yeah. not well, you know throwing down on anybody but i think it's a i think it's something that everybody's got to work toward well like lake erie i didn't doug and i went up there not this year but the year before for the rock race in mm-hmm. september and i didn't realize they dropped their sanction they had dropped it that year or they didn't have mm-hmm. it that year but once they started which like up there is middle of may or something they had something going on every week 
even though they didn't have any racing other than a couple of races to rock come and maybe they done a crash show or two and they done a wine fest different things like that but they had something going on the rusty wallace was there one the drive experience one time or they had something going on every weekend right from uh basically late may till yep. late mm-hmm. september yep uh, and I think it's what it's going to take. I mean, and, you know, somebody chiming in and hearing the comments saying, you know, no, you can't run weekly. And I'm not saying the same racers every week. That, yep. That's the one thing you can't do. You can't put it all on one group of guys because mm-hmm. it's not going to work if you put it all on one group of guys. But if you can break it up and find ways to do – I mean, I got all kinds of ideas. I'm not even going to dive into them because <laughs> we'll be here. We're trying not to give that away. We'll don't be here that, <laughs> until listen, 8 p.m. tomorrow night. We're giving a lot away here on this radio well, you, show, you, you, but we're not giving all that away. We're going <laughs> to monetize some of that here in the years to come just so everybody – Everybody's aware. You can't keep a facility up on eight or ten times a year. No, you really can't. You really, I mean, no. really. And, really. You're not gonna and the, the racetracks are kind of showing that. They're all mm-hmm. kind of falling into disrepair, you know, for the most part. I mean, every track's got a little bit. They're going downhill. Well, just that's what we've, we've been working this winter. Ever, Lightning and I, ever, we get yep. a day here and there. Yep. We've been working on roofs, doing this, that, and the other. But the racetrack is not near as good a shape as it should be in. Mm-hmm. It's not as bad as some. And I'm able to do a lot of the stuff myself that a lot of racetracks can't do. Mm-hmm which helps out, but I mean, you know, we've been, we're trying to keep it in as good a shape as we can, but it's hard. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. just just to, you know, point out a lot of really good comments in the mm-hmm. in the uh, comment section right now here, you know, if you're listening, be sure to check out the comments. I'm going to read one of them because, you know, they said I was right, so I mean, that guarantees <laughs> that they're going to get on here. Uh, BJ Mackey said that I'm right. He said, went to the snowball for the first time, packed house, had a tent with a big TV playing uh, the race Every with year. models selling beer. Every promoter <laughs> in the Southeast should see how they entertain there. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I say every every promoter in this area should go to Carteret and they should go to Dominion and, yeah, and they should yeah. go to Langley and they should go you go everywhere mm-hmm. you, you know ideas and I know you guys have you guys went up uh, up north and you know checked out different places and and I think that's where you gather your ideas yeah. I mean you well, see, see what everybody else is doing Randolph County is a dry county mm-hmm. Asheboro was the largest municipality in North Carolina that was dry <laughs> until four or five years ago yeah so we would have to even get put into the city to be able to sell yeah. alcohol hmm. and I'm the one thing that scares me there is people have been so it. used to bringing in so long when you tell them they can't bring it in what's going to happen yeah. right I don't yeah think, yeah the care wave could never I don't think you could do that hmm. like that you know what I say I mean I think yeah. you got to be buck wild at care <laughs> yeah <laughs> no nah, for real I'm serious I think you I think you got to be buck wild I think you got to take a page from yeah I, I think you do. I know if you don't you do, like if you it. You said it just I now. I punched it. you right in the throat. Could, like, <laughs> right here, wait, right now. I punched you right in the throat. You gotta <laughs> like. You gotta <laughs> like how I took you right to the edge because you started to his lip started oh, twitching. Man. Did you see him? Like his lip. Oh, man. We spend way too much time talking. I knew exactly where to get him to, and he's just twitching a little bit. Thought I was gonna say something bad. He didn't know what to do. That's fine. Look how red he got too. Good stuff. That was a bad one right that there. That was good. I think you. No, got, it wasn't good. It was bad. I think they if they went that way, I think the more redneck the better and i mean Mm -hmm. i love it i I do i'm not putting it down i think i think you gotta come you have to try different things to see what will bring people there and i think everybody kind of gave up trying different things so Mm -hmm. we can't get anything to work it was easy back back 10 years ago you had the fans were coming you had the cars coming and it was easy, so they just kept doing that same thing because it was easy. Yeah. And and then it well, stopped let's say being it was easy. easier. Right. Easier, yeah. 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 It's yeah. never Listen, easy. I mean, yeah. the, the, the only track is uh, Myrtle Beach Speedway. They have the Nopi Nationals. They have the Horry County Fair. They have, they have a lot of stuff yeah. there other than racing now at Myrtle Beach Speedway. And kudos mm-hmm. for them for doing some, a few different things yeah. now. They're winning. I agree. Yep. I really think they're winning. Yeah. I, th- I, I think they've grabbed a hold. I don't, I, I don't think that they didn't lose. They mm-hmm. lost for a while. I think they, but they had a plan and they kept dumping money into it, even mm-hmm. though, they, like we said earlier, right? <laughs> even though they didn't know if they were going to get their return, yep. but they laid a pretty good foundation and now they've got some traction and they're moving forward, right? Or, or, mm-hmm. Do they have eighty cars every night? No, but they're, you know what I mean? They're they're getting a good mm-hmm. group and they, yeah. they you well, know? last two years they've had the best car count of any track around. I agree. Yeah. Well, then what twelve shows a year, as yeah. far as racing something, something like that? Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, but then a bunch of other stuff. Right. The driving school going out of there almost yep. every week. Yep. You know, yep. it's a it's a destination where people get to go to. They're playing off their roots. They they tried a lot of different things that worked and didn't work. Mm-hmm. Yep, I, I agree. mean, hundred percent. Like I, I, I do that. That's why I'm interested in. And if you mm-hmm. notice my question, Royce, what are you trying to do? What are you doing? Like they tried so much stuff. 
a lot of it worked, a lot of it didn't. And I've been tossing the, the Halloween stuff around for three or four years, but the problem is we're doing the north-south. We're doing so much racing and running on that time frame that yeah. we don't have time to do it all. Yeah. I mean, you know, and it's it's just hard to put it together. I mean, yeah, you know. And, I agree. Uh, mm-hmm. So There's so much racing in October, though. It's 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 hard. to. I don't know how you guys get the cars because you have – all the big, all the tracks have their year-end big race all around the same time. And, and like, I, mean, like well, the, I mean, theirs is modified, so I mean, that's that's their big thing. Are, yeah. are you having North South shootout this year? Yeah, but it's at Hickory this year. That's all. That's right. It is at Hickory this year. I but the uh, like a swap meet, mm-hmm. we really can't hardly have one in the South because everybody races to Christmas almost. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and start and back it, in February. And then it's cold weather, so you know. And then like Myrtle Beach is going back in first of February, so I mean, you know, you, you know. Yeah, but my problem is we're not a swap meet away from making this good. Mm-hmm. That's you know, my and you've already thing. got a swap meet in Raleigh and went, yeah, got one up this right. way. So, you know, you're, a racetrack can't get revenue there like Thompson has the big swap meet yeah. in, yeah. Oct- in October. And yeah, Zach I wanted to try to copy that. It didn't work. We right. could do a Zach Brunninger driving school at Caraway. <laughs> well, what's he going to teach him? <laughs> like I said. <laughs> 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 All right, since we've got derailed on race, racetracks again, what, what else you got for us? I think? Oh, I mean, that, well, that was the, uh, the main thing. That, but wait, you come with one question? Oh, I've got a few others. I can figure out something oh, here. Oh, man. Um, but we cost a lot. We've covered a lot, honestly. But the biggest thing is is how do we get, you know, how do we get us to where we can show up again? Like he said, we got to get those other guys that are a, right. a part of the show because nobody wants to watch three cars go around the racetrack. It can be no. the three fastest cars. And, 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 and the three most popular guys. It yep, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But it, w- it takes the – Fifth, tenth, fifteenth, eighteenth place guy to put on a show. They're the ones that are going to end up yeah, sure. getting mad, frustrated, moving people. You know, I mean, I was I moved to the back of the last race at Hickory and started going because this guy over here said I was embarrassing him and <laughs> lost the right front fender. Yeah, I, I remember halfway. that. I remember that. There's a lot of people there that remember that. Yep. I was going to say, yeah, he wasn't the only one. Yeah, so you were embarrassing. Right. <laughs> right. There's There's drivers at home right now like going, I remember that too. Yep. yep. <laughs> I'm Pretty sure much there everybody is. Everybody remembers that. <laughs> but uh, honestly, uh, everybody gives me, I don't know if everybody gives me a bad name, but uh, I just like to race hard. I, I don't, I, I'm not scared well, to get I in there and put great. it. I love it, dude. I, I think love it's great. It. Yeah. yeah. I really do. And ev- I'll be honest. Every fight I've ever got into or every scuffle I've ever got into, I've showed – I've woke up Saturday or Sunday morning with a list of people wanting that to be my friend ad on Facebook oh, and stuff. Dude, listen. Guaranteed. I'm telling you, if I had a racetrack, I would, like, let you be – I'm not allowed <laughs> to say half the words anymore, but I would let you be craziness. Yeah. I, I think that that's the one thing where people know you. Like, that baffles me. By some of these kids that nobody knows who they are, mm-hmm. and they act so politically correct in this gig and do all these things, and I think to myself, dude, you got no clue. You're beat. Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean? Well, no, you're beat. Yeah. You you don't wear a purple hat or orange shoes or <laughs> nobody remembers you. You're as vanilla as yeah. every other guy that stood right beside you. Yeah. So. And you're beaten. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Tell your dad yeah. to write one big check, and uh, your family goes hey, somewhere hey, the, on the, vacation. The, 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 there's people that don't even know nothing about racism who's heard of Derek Stoltz. Right. And yeah, <laughs> you know, that's, that's what I mean. They've heard of him. Because uh, I, I just I think it's hilarious how nobody wants to have any kind of identity we have uh, now. We have, and this is what I the other thing that I can't figure out. The sport was built on all these people that had all these personas about them, right? And this guy was this, and this guy was this. And Characters. He, yep. Correct. And they, were, they, they all told a story. And the interesting part is now we tell everybody, don't be a character so you can go drive for Kyle Busch Motorsports. Yep. No, that doesn't. No, no, no. <laughs> like that doesn't work that no, way. Yeah. And, and and it used to be because you get sponsored. It doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, you Kyle Busch yeah. Motorsports you could, you don't give be, a shit as long as you write him a check. As long as you write him a check, yeah. it doesn't matter. That's it used right. to be because you made sponsors are okay, you know. But it doesn't matter because your parents are paying for it anyway. Yeah. So if your parents, parents, especially if your parents are paying, I'm telling you this. I would like to go on record as saying this. I hope he's listening. <laughs> he hasn't listened in a long time. But Roddy Sterling was ten years. I'm going to say seven. Let's not, let's not date myself. He was seven years ahead of his time. The guy was trying to tell a story. He got had all those video cameras. He, right, now. he had video cameras all over. He had good-looking young girls hanging around, giving away moon pies. Yep. He was having a great time, having nice race cars. The guy was winning. <laughs> Everybody crapped on him, and he was winning. Yeah. I remember him. Right? The moon pack. The moon pack. Right. Yeah. 
and listen. He, then I, the race started. I, yeah. Correct. <laughs> correct. <laughs> but, but here, wait. Right. And I agree. I agree. And it was it was awful. I agree. It was not pretty <laughs> but this at all. This is what we're talking. I'm sorry to cut you no, off, but ahead. this is what we're talking about. We're pushing them those guys away. Right. right. And yeah. social media is right. a big part of it because I can't tell you how as many friend requests as I get. I get probably half as many people sitting there saying, oh, you're no driver. Well, well it's no talent motorsports. What do you expect? I, mean, I, <laughs> <laughs> I love it when people shit on me. Yeah. 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 Dude, really? I'm serious. I, I love it. Yeah. It, it does not bother it me. Makes, it, it gets me more pumped up when yeah. people shit on me. Oh, I love it. When, they, when people talk junk to me, I love it. Yeah. And there's nothing that excites me more because then I'm just going to beat you. Yeah. Right? This is super simple. And it's, and it's <laughs> awesome when you do beat them. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, yeah. So. It's a war now, and I will cut both arms off to win. Right? It's no problem. <laughs> Yeah, but at, at the same time, those, you got both sides. They're talking though. Yeah, exactly. Somebody's exactly. excited about racing, and they're talking yep, about right. it. You sure. know. Yep. And, and that's what and we're that's what we're missing. We're missing that. Yes. And hey, that, hey, that Bowman Gray page, it's lit up every Sunday. <laughs> right. Yeah. There's it, no other page lit up for right. any other race. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's getting his ass whipped this year. I've already seen and heard. Okay. So. But um, that's every year. We're missing. Um, oh, it's the happening this year. Yeah. We're missing the characters. Personalities been run out. And honestly, so. I'm just going to bring up Pickery because that's where I got uh, in one of the fights, or both fights. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All every the fights. one of them, yeah. All the <laughs> um, and, and I get fined every time. I'm, I have a hard time going to the track, anyways. You know, yeah. I, that's why I take, I race once a month or twice a month if I can or whatever, whenever. Yeah. So, okay, now I had a bad night. My sh- my stuff's junk. Sorry, I almost slipped there. And you, um, you got to pay money. I got to pay money <laughs> to put it back together. I got to give that money to this guy over here to b- rebuild my race car. He's okay with that. Ron, yep. Ron Barfield, <laughs> says, you, fight said, Ron Barfield says fight on the front straightaway. He said you're, you're probably going to jail. <laughs> I can't help you what that, but fight on the front straightaway. Hickory? What is the fine cost at Hickory? $100 a person that's on the track. And when you have four or five people on there, that's, that's expensive. Jeez. <laughs> so <laughs> hey, does anybody know where this money goes to? Right. Uh, I will on. say Kevin did say uh, – I me and the Kevin had a conversation. No, he actually donates it. I, I wonder mm-hmm. if I can get on the donation list. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> so so it's $100 do. per person yep. that went on the racetrack. Yep. And it doesn't matter if they're signed in or not or whatever. If well, what if you fight He goes on pits? video and starts looking. What if you fight in the pits? <laughs> Have you never fought in the, pit, in the pits? Uh, honestly, now we got, we got to ask Greg Marlowe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously, Greg, uh, if you're still listening, Greg, let us know, know what the fine is. Right, I know you're listening, Greg. Yeah. Now, honestly, the cops are so bad. As soon as I, I mean, I can't. I, well, they, they know, know you. Right. They want, they know yeah, you. they know me. Minute, but but this really? is the thing. Uh, all right, uh, Myrtle Beach. I got. It's in a fight the same in two the, cops has been there for 33 years. It is. Though, yeah. Right? So <laughs> I got in a fight at Myrtle Beach <laughs> a couple years ago, and no cops around. Nothing was said. We had our scuffle. We well, I gave his hat back <laughs> and, his stop, and his stopwatch. I was like, here, this year's too. We went back and kept, and kept spotting for the rest of the race. Right. I mean, it, was just, it was great. I mean, it, it probably wasn't so good for him, but it was awesome. I, it was just, uh, I don't know. We're missing that kind of thing. Why, why do we need to find the driver? Why do we uh, need to have the cops putting a taser to my neck and, and going, taser, taser, taser? I've seen uh, uh, Grissom. Did they hit you with the taser? They didn't hit me with it. I've seen Grissom. I mean, he Grissom's legitimately. a lot bigger than you. Yeah, he is. That was not good. And he fell hard. He did fall hard. <laughs> Marlo I don't said want it that. was $100 in the pits, too. $100. Yep. Uh, yep. So yeah. I don't want that. <laughs> right, he did. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he did lately. That's what he just yeah. said. I believe you. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's what the man said. I can't. I can't tell you anything. Was in the pits, right? Uh, Zach, are you headed to uh, Greenville this weekend? I know you thought about it. I don't know. So you're, you're waiting on waiting on a baby to come. Yeah, I, I was I, gonna say his yeah. wife's doing that home. Yeah, he, uh, he uh, usually uh, keeps uh, her in the car. Is she sitting in the car? Like, listen, hold on. Sitting in the car. Right. I would like you to know. She's sitting in the car right now. Right. Poor, like, poor girl. He, he comes here in more ways than one. He comes yeah. here, and his wife, a great lady, definitely the best half of this entire deal. Yeah. Right, like the best three quarter seven eight. <laughs> yeah, not denying it. And I, I completely think she has glaucoma or some <laughs> other debilitating eye disease that she can't actually see what he looks like. Right? Wow. She, she, she met me when I look like this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everybody's seen this on the screen. She, she the whole kids to block yeah. him. I, I set that hook, line, and sinker. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely outkicked his coverage. <laughs> 
Yeah, he makes her sit in the car. He comes in here for an hour and he makes her sit in the car. Yeah, yeah, no more. Yeah, so, I, so I wouldn't trust my question. lady, any lady around Roger. Right <laughs> as studly as this guy is, I mean, his wife uh, doesn't either. I can go ahead and tell you. <laughs> here we go. That's just what I needed. Thank you. That's how it starts. That's and There's every gun. I, I was on the phone with him on speakerphone one day and it didn't go good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, oh. that tells about Greenville this weekend. Right. Yeah. Thank you. What so the? this uh, up until. Uh, today's doctor's appointment we were going racing uh but unfortunately she is now three centimeters dilated and the doctor said uh she could be tonight could be next week but she's not especially due in three weeks but the doctor said it's not gonna make it to that due date well if she comes before saturday can you go race uh, i doubt it dude you're <laughs> dirty <laughs> i'm just asking i know him listen, okay i yeah, know him but listen yeah. there's some shit i mean i like to grab a man <laughs> up right here there's like there's not a lot that i would fight over but me and him would fight over that there's no reason he should be at home for sure on that that's a once in a lifetime you don't get to check that out twice don't be an idiot <laughs> oh, it's like nice. we're making eye contact do not be yeah. an idiot right? like, there's a lot of dumb stuff you do but yeah, do not do don't this do don't one. do that guy Steven yeah. said his first he's heard is y'all weren't racing. Just, just <laughs> like, he just found out. He just, <laughs> he just bump steered the thing. Dude. He's pissed off. The man's been working on it, and you just say, nah, we ain't going racing. Uh, well, Pat, well, Pat uh, pass this weekend, what, what do you plan on doing this year? Um, honestly, racing wherever, whenever, wherever. Um, it's uh, I, I got a spec motor now, so I kind of limited myself on the, the limited deal at, at Greenville. It was an awesome deal. I mean, it was thousand dollars to win last year. You bought two tires. You could walk out of there with some money, yeah. Uh, which made it easier to go back the next week and right. do it again. Right. And um, but now I've, I've I've got the spec motor, and I don't think they have rules for it yet. So yeah, and they, I I can't do, do the guinea they pig. Do. Oh, they do. They do. Yeah, yep. they do. Okay. They are ready to go for this weekend. There you go. Okay. Yeah. So. yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah. You you should um, hang out more with. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> do you know what the rules Lane are? So we know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> same uh, same rules from. Uh, what did he tell us? Same rules from last year. No, Southeast. Didn't he say Southeast? It was uh, the spacer plate. It was from a particular well, Hold on. Race. If you just wait 20 uh, minutes, what, we'll play the thing. Here's, yeah. here's what we're going to do. a good segue. <laughs> we're going to call Anthony Andrews up, and we're going to find out exactly what cool. uh, he has to say. So right, let's get him on got, the phone. Uh, Anthony Andrews on the line here, promoter extraordinaire from uh, Greenville Pick and Speedway. He's gearing up for his fifth season uh, running the racetrack. And uh, they're gearing up for their season opener, which will take place this Saturday. Uh, the uh, limited late models will go for uh, 125 laps, 10,000 to win. Uh, Anthony, welcome to the show, buddy. Thank you, buddy. How you doing? I'm living the dream, man. Not not as good as you are, but I'm living the dream. Uh, we all were living the dream. We're just enjoying some some of this weather that we're having day in and day out. So guess what? Ain't much you can do, so therefore you're just trying to relax and enjoy some time out of the state of South Carolina, up in Kansas. But enjoying a dream, really, I sure I really am. But no, we're excited about the uh, the the opener coming up this Saturday, the 125 limited late model, you know, meltdown race that we got going in. It's we're, we're excited about that. We've got a lot of people. I think we're gonna have a full car count there for the ten thousand dollars, and I'm excited. Hope the weather. You know, tits pace with us, and it looks like it's going to be warm. Looks like 65, 68 degrees, so should be good. Well, that's what I was going to ask. I was hoping you had done ordered up some good weather for this weekend. Yeah, I know. Every time I come to Kansas, the people up here tell me stay in South Carolina because I seem to bring the weather with me every time I come up here. <laughs> but it looks like, far as of as of right now, it looks like we're going to have a good Saturday of racing. Um, I, I, you know, it, we're supposed to be getting rain again tomorrow, and some uh, Wednesday into Friday, but I think it clears out for the weekend and comes back midday Sunday. So it looks like as of right now we're going to be okay. But you know how that weather forecast can change from from hour to hour. So Absolutely. we hope it's not going to be here. Yeah, that's right. Um, this weekend, man, uh, you got all the divisions running, not just the limited late models, but I think everybody's eyes are on uh, are, are on that limited late model show. I mean, uh, when you put that out there for uh, ten thousand to win, I think you really got those limited late model guys talking. Yeah, you know something we, you know, I just want I wanted something a little different for those guys. You know, you know this is our fifth year doing this, actually fourth year doing this limited the the meltdown race with the limited and normally with the supers it's just a right. little too late for us to get the supers in there, so we made it our opening show. But the limited guys, you know, last year we had a an average fill around thirteen to fifteen mm-hmm. cars every week and have some of the best racing with these young guys. And, um, you know, and normally on that 
limited race that we do as far as the meltdown. You know, we normally have 20, 18, 20, 22 cars. But the 10000 to win is, you know, uh, it, it was something that, you know, I could pile some money together for an opening for a special race, which is going to be my opener. So I put it out there, 10000 to win. If we've got 25-plus race cars and it drops down to 15, 6000 to win, then it drops on down to 4000 to win if it's below that. But what's really unique about this race is I raced this race one time before back back when I was running a little bit of supers, and I, I raced it down in Georgia, but we ran a 50-lap um, dash and just come in for some adjustments, and then we ran another 50 laps, and we had the option to take two tires or no tires. If you pick two tires up, you got shuffled back into the field, and the guys that didn't got shuffled on up, you know, positions on towards, you know, first, second, third, ever how they fell out. And I really enjoyed that race. When I raced that race, it reminds I mean, that race stays stuck with me for as long as I've been racing. And I thought I'd give that same race to these guys. They're young. They've never been in this kind of race before. Most of them haven't. Gives them time to work with their crew chiefs and make some adjustments and, and really, you know, all of them works together for the next 50 laps to get to a point where who's going to make the right call and who's going to be the best outside you know, driver there because two tires, I believe, toward the end of the year last year, our outside groove was working better, our inside groove after the new payment's been down for three years. And it seemed like, uh, similarly, most of our races were worn on the out, one passing on the outside. So it's going to be a challenge to these guys to, if they want these two tires for that 25 lap dash, or are they going to hopefully feel like their car is good enough to jump out there and stay in front before them two tires catch up with them? So it should be pretty exciting. And uh, we're going to try to give this crowd something for, for them to talk about. You know, talking with our crowd of people, that's what they want, too, as well. They want to see some of it kind of changed up and kind of threw around a little bit, give them some racing so they can be up on the edge of their feet. And these guys gave it to them last year, and it's going to be really good. I can't wait. Yeah, I'm definitely excited about that one. Uh, race 22 will be there, of course, uh, covering the race this weekend. Uh, looking forward to it. Uh, and to have that big of a limited show and to have the uh, regular late models there for uh, for the show, that's pretty unusual uh, for the big shows around here. So I think that's pretty cool that you guys are doing that too. Yeah, I just, you know, just want to bring them all together and have all divisions and try to work them together, you know, all along the year. My whole schedule is based on limiteds and late models working together all all year this year. And uh, we're looking at maybe throwing a couple extra limited races in throughout the year here, special races, doing the same 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 deal here. So, you know, if you don't get to make it this time, next time, you know, you might be able to get to make it. But I just want to just want to have something a little unique that somebody else is not doing right now. So that's what I'm working for for the for the racers, young racers especially. Gotcha, Anthony. It's Roger. How uh, how are you, my friend? Good, Roger. How you doing, buddy? I'm good, pal. What? Uh, give us Hi. some. Give us some examples of what your changes are. You know, people that haven't been around you, haven't been around what you got going. You know, there's a lot of drama in the off season about different things that happen. Lisa's not renewing. Blah 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 blah. And here we are again. You know, we're we're going right back at it. Tell tell some of the people some of the things you're jamming through doing here that they might not know if they haven't been around the racetrack in the last little bit. Well, you know, uh, you know. I just needed to be a little bit more free with the facility instead of just racing there at Greenville Pickett Speedway. The way the lease was written to a point where the only thing I could do is pretty much racing, and I actually had it amended to do a light show dinner, you know, a Christmas light show, which has been very successful for me. But when, you know, I was really gone. I wasn't really planning on coming back, and I was actually looking at doing some more racing myself this year. And, and uh just got a phone call from Kevin wanted to sit down and negotiate. I had a little, you know, uh, you know, a, uh, a contract there for him to review there before we really decided to depart, but he seemed to really come around there at the end. So we're working on a, a motorsports complex there at Greenville Pickens Speedway. We're going to be bringing in some, some, um, some, some dirt bike, you know, uh, we already got mid East coming in on April 4th. 5th, 6th, and 7th, which they estimate around 14, 1,500 motorcycles in the back of Greenville Pickens there, which is about 200 acres back there, 12 miles of riding, and we're working that with them at, at the racetrack as well. They're going to be doing some quad racing inside the track the same night. We have all our divisions running, 
and uh, we're just trying to mix mix things in, in, in with a dirt facility as well with the asphalt facility. And I'm not going to say that um, next year inside Greenville Pickett Speedway will be a 3H dirt track. I'm working on planning commission right now with a with a local planning planning uh, there in Pickens, South Carolina. So um, we've got the red. I mean, we've got the uh, green light so far. Things are looking really good. But um, that's kind of where I'm going with it. And just trying to bring in all sorts of different kind of racing because we all know little short tracks today is just really having a hard time just making it from week to week or every other week or month to month as far as that goes. But I have to say this much right here. I was in the promoters meeting down in Daytona and um and and it was really, really impressive to hear that the Francis the France family really wanted to work back into our local our local tracks and they have assured us that they're going to make changes to make things happen where they're going to be helping us to cross promote with Charlotte, Atlanta, Darlington, and doing things more for our local tracks than they've ever did in a, in, in a long time. So we were really excited to hear a lot of that news down there in Daytona just, you know, just a couple of weeks ago. So, you know, for all that to be said, that's kind of where I'm at with it. I just love the sport of it and enjoy the different, 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 you know, abilities to be able to justify in the Greenville to be able to do different things, just not the Saturday night asphalt racing. So excited. We've got a lot of people excited about it. And uh, we've already got a couple clubs has already come on board with us out there. We've got a Jeep club. It's got, you know, a hundred plus Jeeps involved with these trails out there. It's, 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 it's kind of blown up. And I really didn't even gave a formal, a formal, you know, overlook and to get it started yet for as promoting it right out the door, you know? Right. And, you know, you and I have talked, you know, many times about, you know, what it takes to, you know, do things at a racetrack. And people just don't understand that, you know, opening up on a Saturday night doesn't automatically make you a millionaire. And everybody believes that for some reason. But that, that sure doesn't work out that way, does it? No, absolutely not. I mean, I'll be honest with you, if I wouldn't have had the Christmas light show there, I'd have probably lost a half a million dollars in the time I was there. But fortunately, that thing really did well right there in the state of South Carolina, North Carolina, and Georgia. And I've even pulled people from Texas, Florida, you know, Virginia, just to come down to our show, just in the light side of it, Christmas time. We used the facility to, 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 you know, to another level of something that it can be used for just except racing. And there's a lot of facilities across the southeast I think it would work at, too. I even talked with Southern National about maybe coming up there this, this year. I went to the Expo Center out there in Tulsa, Oklahoma last year with it. Um, it you know, just bringing other ways of bringing income just besides racing, even though we know racetracks were the thing back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. But, you know, they slowly leaked away from, from the roots of what we are. And um, you've got to bring other things there to, to justify the facility. Um, now nah, you're not going. You don't think because you own a racetrack or you own a piece of property that you're a millionaire by no means. You got to work for what you got. And that's kind of me. I'm just a person I like to go and just test something and see what, see if it works. If it don't, it does, and test something else. But what's unique about Greenville Pick and Speedway is that it's set on roughly about 325 acres of property. I don't know many racetracks that have that far as in a local Saturday night racing. The, the you know race not race nights but kevin has been able to you know buy property all the way around it and, and he's got a race and sports complex there that only thing it's ever been used for is just a saturday night race and a fair upstate fair so i've been able to work like i said back with the lease to be able to expand that into a lot of different other things that's coming for the 2019 season which is really going to be good for the facility there Right now, I'm in I'm in the pits. I ripped completely the concession bathrooms out. I believe when you get there, you're going to be amazed what I just did with these bathrooms. I mean, I just these bathrooms are going to be first class bathrooms, and when you come into them, you're going to feel like you're in your home. I've had a few complaints last year, but I was kind of out the door. I just kind of was like, you know, that could be his problem. But we ripped those bathrooms down to the concrete, jackhammer concrete out, and put tile floors on them and redone the walls. They're going to be really, 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 you know, impressed with the bathrooms. Complete new septic system in there and up, up, up top and down bottom. So we did some improvements right here just at the very end of the year and the first of the year here, even dealing with the rain. We all know we get in rain every two to three days. Last week at Greenville, we got over eight inches of rain. And it's just been been really short time dealing with the weather, trying to do some improvements that I really wanted to do. But 
we're getting there slowly, but it's just kind of having to work with Mother Nature here. Tell us about your staff, bud. Who do, who do you got in case, uh, you know, people run into troubles? I know it's going to have a pretty decent car count this week. Tell us, tell us about your staff. Who's who's running things? Who you got where? Or what, you know, who's back from last year? Who's not? You, you know what I mean? Okay, well, um, I've actually moved some of our staff around. You know, uh, I've, I've, I've hired Rick Hunter that used to be part of NASCAR when I was racing with Kevin for, you know, four or five years. He actually he threw me out, cost me two championships over the shot deal back in the day. And, I, you know, it was a cold night. And, you know, we all know back when we had to pass the, the test of the, uh, you know, so many seconds with a shock, you know, extending itself. I lost two championships over just the left front shot. But, but Rick, you know, I just know he's fair and he's straightforward and, and uh, he can work and work with all these guys. But we've added Rick as our head tech guy. I've actually moved um, uh, a gentleman out of our uh, service truck into the tire shed to handle the tires, which is Matt Likey with, along with Robert. And, uh, I mean, I've got Greg with Ortec. I mean, Greg with Ortec used to be Ortec Racing. Big Greg, everybody knows he was my race director. Really, really good guy. He's he's um, he's going to be actually with Derek Latham and him is going to be actually in the tower together, working, calling the shots and overseeing, you know, the you know the races and working together, putting four eyes up there instead of two eyes, and along with a along with Mark in the, in the, in, in the flagman stand, Chuck, that's been part of racing as far as he, he flagged my first race and we call him Chuck in the truck. But Chuck, um, Chuck is our cleanup guy. And then we got, we got Fats going to be under Rick as far as the tech guy. And, um, you know, just got, um, pretty much the, you know, we've added Rick in and pretty much the same staff. We just moved everybody around in different positions and moved them in out of areas where, I'll be honest with you guys, don't really don't mind saying this, but you know something, I've been there, this is my fifth year, but I can honestly say I have given it 100% as far as the fairness of any racetrack could. I might have been a little too hard on some people there, too. And um, part of some of that meeting down in Daytona was that you're going to get to see the cut guys, all this, you know, rubbing or touching and things and how they get penalized. They're going back to... You know they want rubbing, they want they want they want fenders, they want wrecks, they want everything in the sun. So they, they 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 so you know that's what the crowd likes. That's what they, that's what they like to see, and that's kind of what I'm going to kind of follow their same 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 thing here. You know, if you spin a man out, you know, and you get to get through the crowd, normally we put both of you to the back. We're going to be looking at letting that guy go on and let that guy come on back, and we know what's going to happen. He's going to get up there and spin him out, so get the crowd involved and. Here we go. So that's stuff that we've got so tied on, we've got so hard on. Instead of it, you know, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, now we're gonna let them race. And you know, if someone takes somebody intentionally, that's another thing. But if you're racing, getting off in three, and cut down on the guy, you make it through there, and he don't. That's two different things. You just gotta look at the situation and and, and, and address it accordingly. But but um, but you know, I honestly believe to say this to say this overall, I've had one of the best staffs at Greenwood Pickett Speedway in a long time for the last four years. I've got some people that seems to seem different from that, but I just know when we have decisions and we made decisions, we come together as a team to make sure we made the right decisions. If it was a gray line area with an intake or a set of heads or something of that nature. So um so that's where we at and I feel good with my staff and and um they really did a good job. So that's 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 what I've got and that's what we're gonna run with. So hopefully People can see that I'm just as honest, and they're just as honest, and we're going to be just as good for, I don't care if you're coming from Georgia or if you're coming from New York. You don't make no difference. We're going to treat you the same, and that's just the way it's going to be. Well, one thing's for sure is Derek and uh, Fats and Greg, there aren't three better people probably anywhere than those guys. Yeah, and you know, what I struggle with a little bit, Langley, is because Derek has been a tired guy all his life, even though when we used to be able to, you know, have no tire rule. Derek was the man. Everybody around our neighborhood went to Derek for tire softener. He knew the tires, the tire business. Derek's grown up with a tape measure beside his side when he was old enough to, you know, walk around in diapers. I mean, he just knows tires so well. So he'll help someone that comes into the race. He'll help them get their tires together. And people take that, you know, we have a lot of locals. They take that up very offendedly for some reason. But I assure you, you know, I, you know we went behind – to prove to them, we went behind them to give them the, 
opportunity. You, you, can, you can look and see anything you want to. But in our new rule this year, if any driver that thinks something's wrong with a set of tires in any division, none of them allow the soap, they are able to take a we, – we've got it set up where you can take a $200 tire, just clip a little piece of the tire sample out of it, send it up to the lab, just, you know, a couple – about an hour away from her, and they can then do the analysis on it, and they can tell us if that thing's been tampered with. So we've opened that rule up this year so they can do that as well. So so Derek's just been – Derek's been so good. And, you know, attitudes is a big thing at the racetrack. I have to say Derek and Fast has probably got one of the not best – communication but i've been working with them you know you you know everybody's got to have the understanding that hey sometimes women we're not the best every time we roll up the racetrack especially when everybody gets up and starts yelling and arguing with each other and you have to get in and get very aggressive with them and split them up and but you know Derek and fast their attitudes they got wonderful and they're wonderful people but i have been working with them hey guys we got to have that smile. We got to have that love. We got to have that care to everybody comes in here, and let them understand that you you work with them, do everything we possibly can, as long as within that rule book. I tell you one thing that I that I've appreciated every time I've ever came to uh, Greenville, and I think you know anybody would appreciate this. And this don't happen at every racetrack, but like the tech process there, I mean. I more or less could participate in it myself. I can stand there and watch what's going on. Yes. I mean, a lot of racetracks, it's all secretive, and everybody's trying to hide something, and they act like, you know, something's going on. But you guys have kept that, you know, wide open to where everybody can see what's going on. There's no closed doors. There's no, you know, you know that you're not getting screwed because it's open. You can see it. You see everything that happens. Yeah, and what we're doing this year in tech, I changed this up as well. Just in that formality you said, but this is what we're doing, and I just announced this in our driver's meeting last month, that if the track pulls any item, <clears throat> so if the top three comes in with full collaborators, we're going to set them on the bench. Each crew member can bring him and one other person in. After we get through teching them, they're allowed to look at all three collaborators. We're not going to say, you know, you know, okay, this carburetor is bad and nobody gets to see it or whatever. So everybody's going to literally put their eyes on there. If they see something that needs to be brought to our attention that I think that's outside our hands that we don't see and is a gray area, then we'll take it outside us. And this is something what we're working with with NASCAR, with, with the tracks kind of close to us, bringing their tech in. If there's some kind of question there that we believe that if they saw something that they said, oh, y'all letting something go by, you know, this ain't fair, so we'll take it up to a, a local track that's close to us to get another opinion. On anything, we kind of been structuring that with all all tech, you know, officials around our area through the NASCAR, through the board meetings that we've been having up in Charlotte. So that's going to be big, and that's going to be good for everybody to understand. It ain't just a tech man giving the last say-so. We have you to look at it and know that the last say so is going to be right. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense, and that's really awesome. I think it's great. Did did uh, did I see that uh, you guys have LED lighting? Did I see, or was that some BS on Facebook? Oh, no, that's big time down there. No, I've been putting in some LED lights in the replacement of the LED of the because you know because this at Bubs we have now we put we put in um, we put in a lot of LED lights in the pits that's along the front stretch right before I left to come to Kansas there. And um, and uh, we we I bought I bought 50 LED lights to put in place up there, and I'm strapping them to the poles because I don't own the place, I lease the place, but I'm strapping them to them. And what's so unique about these LEDs, I, you could put up five LED 240 watt LED bulbs off one 15 ounce breaker. So you talking about saving money? Really? As far as in the it's unbelievable the money we're going to save. So I'm not going to be rushing to turn the lights off when, when the racing's over because, you know, that meter is out there running full blast. But um, we are. We're not going to have it all changed out before this opening race here, but we're going to have hopefully the whole front stretch turns into coming out turns three and going into turn one. And all the pit areas, all the pit areas, and um, and um, all the pit areas and, and around the tech shed, you know, it's always been a little bit of darkness in there. Yeah. It's all lit up now. Everybody's going to know where they're going to be. It's some, you know, very little cost. 
Yeah, that's really awesome. Uh, is there anything else this season that uh, you know you're excited about, or any other events that you got coming up? I know you said you might do some other special events throughout the season. Is there anything else that you uh, have you know worked out that you want to talk about? But just the only things I was telling you about, we're bringing in maybe some national and some regional motorcycle, um, motocross right. stuff, you know, that, that we're going to incorporate with the racing and bring some freestyle stuff in just to get the kids and trying to get the people back in. And I've hired a, I've hired a marketing agency that um, we've been putting a lot of different plans together for some, a lot of marketing and trying to get some people to the racetrack. First time I've did that since I've been there. So, um, I've got the marketing plan in place, a full-time employee for that as well. And uh, as far as events, you know, we'll probably be looking at maybe doing something again with uh, with the limited later models through the through the through the end of the year, and um, and uh, through the year and at the end of the year. And um, <clears throat> just um, just uh, got to work on car count. That's the biggest thing. I you know you know car count is the key for you know putting putting people in the stands i mean you think about it every car you bring normally brings families and you know friends so we need we need we need people building little cars and starting from the four cylinder up so we can get people in the stands and i think that i think that our our our, our nascar family which the france family i think they're seeing that we're struggling on that and they're willing to start helping which is going to be one super thing for all the local tracks Speaking of car count, what do you what do you think you're going to get for this? this? Is a big a big weekend for you down there with your opener? What what do you how many are you expecting? I believe we're going to be over 25 easy. I've talked to a lot of people. You know, a lot of people have been calling me just because of the rules there between the uh, you know because I did I did I did adapt the southeast rules that Ed and them run down at Myrtle Beach with the spacer plates because of the upgrades and the Harrington motor. I knew the Harrington motor was a little better than the Ford motor, but with the upgrade, I'm not sure. I haven't tested that upgrade. I don't know myself. So we're going to run the spacer plates from that Myrtle Beach race and see how that kind of pans out at Greenville here. But um, um, <clears throat> it's just, um, it, it's just, uh, it's just, you know, you know, you can talk to a lot of people, and we all know this. But once the day rolls up and who rolls through the gates, a different, a different ball game. Sure, sure. <laughs> But I think we're going to have 25 for sure more. Uh, you know, I've had a couple of people think we're going to have 35 cars. Hey, I've heard but, some um, big numbers. I'm I just interested know, to see. I just, sorry. I've heard again. some big numbers, a lot of people talking about going, so I'm interested to see how many you're going to get. I'm, um, I'm, you know, I am too. So, um, you know, we're going to, with, with, with Racing 22, they're going to be covering it live so they can kind of, you know, put it out there to the people and see what's taking place as far as with it. But I think this is, uh, uh, I honestly believe this race right here is catching a lot of young, young, you know, you know, if you've won more than two races, you're not eligible for it. And if you, you know, Southeast race used to have, if you were the past champion, you could, you wasn't eligible for it, but I waived that. So anybody that's won less, you know, if they've not won, but two races, they're eligible for the race this race. So, um, so I heard someone possibly said Jake Crum was coming, and that's when in the last three years, I don't know if he's eligible to race or not. I haven't looked at it. I, I would haven't say he is. He is. Um, I would say he is eligible. Yeah, somebody told me it was. So, you know, um, so we can bring in, you know, um, people that's been sitting out of racing for three, four years. I mean, even me, even people think I would even race ball and race, but I wouldn't. Well, I was I'd getting ready to say, you, you are eligible. Langley's yeah, face lit am. up a little bit ago. <laughs> he couldn't wait to get that out. <laughs> yeah, but um, no, uh, you know, um, I, yeah, you, yeah, you're right. Somebody like me, I would be eligible for it. But um, you take people that's just been sitting out of racing and uh, not been right there on top of it, or people that's raced, they feel like they get that opportunity to, Jump up there and, and you know get that front run and then and be able to been able to um, do it you know get a win there. So y'all might want to push that out there in that so they'll know you know I mean I know it's coming down five days six days out but you know that's where it's at. All right, man. Well, uh, we appreciate Roger, you, Roger. Roger, Roger, you can jump out there yourself. I think you need to come on down here. And, you, hey, you can't get him to come to a racetrack, man. He's too busy for all that. I, I, yeah, I'm too busy to go to a racetrack. What do you mean? 
I just don't I gotta take, I gotta bring Lee parts uh, though, so I think I'm gonna lose. I, I have to go to the racetrack, I'm pretty sure, this weekend. Well, it's about time. This will be the first race he's been to in like six years. He is so full of it. <laughs> always, always busting my balls. Hey, I appreciate you, buddy. I appreciate all the things you're doing down there. Um, I, I think I think it's great to have you help out. I think a lot of people don't understand, you know, some of the sacrifice you and your family go through with, you know, with that place, both the, you know, the swings of financial money and, you know, ups and downs and, and the time, just the time. I don't, you know, that that's the most important thing that we have, so... I, I want you to know I appreciate you. I appreciate what you're doing down there, and uh, keep it up. And if we can help you hey. here at all, let me know. Let us know how we can do it. Absolutely, and I really appreciate it as well. Thank y'all so much for airing all you can and trying to do what y'all do for the racing racing family here. Thank you so much. Yeah, man, looking forward to seeing you this weekend. Let everybody know uh, where they can find out more information about uh, this weekend's race. It should be on GrainvillePickens.com or our Facebook page. All right, man. Sounds good. Appreciate you joining us. Thank you, buddy. Bye-bye. All right, All right guys. That was uh, Anthony Anders. Uh, <clears throat> he's uh, got a big race coming up this weekend. Hopefully, uh, there'll be a big crowd. I mean, we're one car short over here because Zach ain't going to race now. That Now that he's let his crew know that he's not going to race. So. <laughs> we're yeah. going to try. Uh, oh, so now he's oh, back in the yeah. game. Here. All of a sudden, he's <laughs> coming around. A couple more beers. He'll be in. <laughs> they, they're getting ready to have a C-section. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so sad. That's so sad. Don't do that to him. Yeah. We would only do it if if the baby came early, like t- tonight or tomorrow. You know, I it mean, was time to get the baby here, get adjusted. Did you leave the car running so there'd be a little <laughs> rumble there? I mean, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. So we're ready. Uh, I mean, we were, last year uh, was my first late model win, um, and uh, we had a win at Greenville Pickens and limited late models as well, um, and. Uh, Ran pretty good. Uh, we, I, I'll, I'll state this: that Roger mentioned in other po- or other shows here. Uh, the it's been all over the internet. C- the cost versus tires and, or uh, the car itself. It took me two years to build and buy the car from Roger. Mm-hmm. I mean, I brought Roger like a thousand bucks. Like, hey, he did it go. though. Yep. Like he did it the long way. Yep. He brought it in ones, didn't he? <laughs> no, <laughs> nah, he didn't bring it in ones. He- <laughs> <laughs> like he came in though it was like he we, this was a process he yeah. i think th- some of the guys don't understand him thomas bean th- these guys are winning and they're winning all in the same way they're they, they, they we set that thing up for six months or something yeah. right we yeah and we tried to save some cost in some areas try to do some other things that we could do yep. that probably weren't the smartest on my side because i didn't you know but but th- the difference is i i'm i'll play the long game and mm-hmm. try to I think if you run them out of business, it doesn't do them no good because they're not around to buy any more parts. Yeah. So we set something up and went that way, and yep. you kept building it and kept building it one AR at a time, one AR at a time, one AR at a time. Yep. Boom. Now you enlist a couple of dip wads to help you. <laughs> right? He's definitely got that covered. <laughs> yeah, and then bam. You're, yep. I mean, like, we shouldn't be surprised to see you run well at any limited race i mean that, that's just kind of where it's at now or, or late model race yeah. now. no right but i mean and that's the thing honestly if tires the cost at the track is the hard part um the week i can spread that cost of building the car over time like like i did yeah. but the the getting to the track and saying okay um i'm gonna go two hours away two and a half hours away to greenville pick and speedway and if i have a great car which i do i mean honestly it's it's a the difference between my old cars and, and, and the new car now, it's night and day. Um, going there and having a good car, but something stupid happens. I yeah. don't know. Blow right front tire. Whatever. Right. Who, who, whatever happens. And, and now you're finishing to 15th, and you're getting 200 bucks to, to go home and, and, and what do you do? You're <laughs> I'm saying to go to Greenville. Yeah. No, right. I'm not at Greenville. That, that, that's other <coughs> places. Yeah. Greenville paid pretty good. Yeah. Uh, no, even yeah. to start, it paid pretty yeah. good to where, okay, my max loss is only going to be 650 bucks. Okay. Uh, I went to Hickory this year. And this is funny. I don't think they even know it. I went to Hickory this year on my house payment money. Uh, wow. <laughs> and uh, I uh, wasn't, the smartest, wasn't the smartest thing. Bill money. Like, my bill money, I went to Hickory. They wanted to go the night we won. Um, <laughs> I, I had to 
to run well to I be able to this make story. Yeah, that's a good story, <laughs> given that you won. Yeah. Right? That could have ended yeah. really bad. <laughs> <laughs> to make my my house payment, we had to bring home around nine fifty thousand dollars, and that's what we ended up doing. I finished second in the first race and won the second race. And yes, I still lost money because I bought two sets of tires, did it the right way, everything, right. Uh, practice and all. But still. Uh, I brought home enough money to pay the rest of the house payment, and I was broke for two or three People weeks People want to know how committed. This, this is the greatest thing ever. This could not be realistically happening in any other way. People want to know how committed Zach Berninger is. He would rather win than pay his house payment. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like, think about that. He would I rather mean, race, not necessarily no, yeah, win. win. Yeah. Right. So, uh, I mean, shut up. Right. Like, uh, that's awesome. And, and I'm not telling you should. I'm not an advocate for that. Hold on, let's back. Up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have parents everywhere calling tomorrow, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, I'm not. I, all I'm saying is I, that's a level of commitment right there that I, I, I can tell you that I can't do. Yeah. Like I can't do it. Mm-hmm. I, I can't. I, I understand. I, I couldn't do that. Nope. I, I, it's something that I'm not strong enough. I will, but I'm not, I'm not strong enough to do that. I would. When it gets to that point, I would. Hey, but at least, uh, unlike Corey, you were strong enough to stay here. Yeah, for what about that show? guy? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, dang, man, he's changed. That guy, I don't know, since he's become gay or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. We're definitely getting taken off the air now. <laughs> right. I, I'm fine with it. I still like yeah. him. I'm just saying that's it's quite a change for him. I don't know. He used to be such a good guy. It's sad to see where he's become. Mm. I don't really even know where to go after that. Yeah, me either. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got a question uh-huh. for Darren, okay? I got a question for you to answer for Darren. Okay. When are you coming to Caraway? Ah. Uh, what gets you to Caraway? There, there's a question. That, that's, that's another a serious question. question. What, what gets, gets you, you to there? Caraway? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Steve said an F45 tire. <laughs> um, honestly, I've never given I, – I, I think drivers have a, a, a syndrome, seriously. And I just broke the last couple of years. Um, I'm scared <laughs> to leave Hickory. It's my home track. Right. I I'm agree with that. I'm scared to leave Hickory. Yeah, but Hickory. sometimes he don't give you no choice. Yeah, but honestly, this year. I, this year. <laughs> I, 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 love, I mean, I get along with Kevin, but I, we had we hit bud headed, and we said, all right, we're out. So we went out in the parking lot, reset the race car up, and went to Greenville and ended up winning that night. Yeah. Um, so, but uh, because I broke that syndrome, I broke the, and I, I want to make Hickory last. I don't want Hickory to end up getting mowed over and become a bunch of cemetery land. Right. So I want to support my home track, uh, but at the same time, uh, I want to be able to go out and race different places. And I didn't think I could go out and win or run or competitive at other places, or the big part is money. Yeah. It afford the, the $150 uh, gas bill there and back, you know, and... If I blow a trailer tire out, because you're driving three, four times the distance, as I would just go down the road to Hickory. So, um, cost is the biggest thing for me. It's the reason I went to Greenville this year, this past year, the past two years actually. Thousand dollars to win a limited race when they have twin nights is still a thousand dollars win each race, not cut in half. Yeah, wow. that's yeah, that's wow. no brainer. So, so what gets you to Caraway? Money. <laughs> well, I, no, I guess that's a good question. No, if you, what, for sure. What are you paying, yeah. and how does your deal right, work? How does your deal work? The forty lappers will pay eight hundred to win okay. and a hundred to start. <clears throat> and uh, F F fifty tire. Yep. Four new at the beginning of the, right. the first. And, then and what if you come, if you come in and you didn't do that, you only have a choice of buying two scuffs. But there, we'll have to let you go in and pick. Or we'll have some scuffs, and you have to pick from them because that's that's fair. Mm-hmm. I mean. Because everybody else picked their tires too. Yep. I mean, you still don't know. It's like Kingsport style. So it's not yeah. a random right. draw of two no, tires that no. could be junk. I right. could go you, in and you'd look go in. We've we got to have good scuffs because mm-hmm. everybody's got right. uh, basically 40 laps on and their tires. And if tire. it's an F50, it's a good scuff. I right. Yeah. <laughs> but you need to go in and let it, he can measure his right. tires. Yeah. He mm-hmm. can draw them and stuff like that and kind of get more what he needs than if he just got a random draw. I mean, and that right. would be fair because the next guy has already done that when he bought his four new ones. Right. Right. Got gotcha. you. So I mean that, that's that's the the bottom dollar for me is the reason I go places. Um, we went to Anderson this year on a whim, um, just because I heard tires were uh, cheaper there, and sure enough they were. I mean it was mm-hmm. what five fifty for a set. I don't know what it was. It was it was cheaper, whatever it was, and it paid decent. And I ended up losing a couple hundred bucks, but. Um, well, you kind of expect to lose some. No, stuff that's that. what I think is amazing, right? Yeah, like, man. you kind of expect to lose some, yeah. right? Like, I'm cool with losing some. Yeah. And I know you can't. Uh, the businessman in me knows you can't give it 
all back to them, right? Right, yeah. uh, right. And right. talking to Darren, right? I, I, you can't. I know you can't give it because you got to keep enough to keep the lights on and the insurance mm-hmm. paid and the water bill and the Seven yeah. Up trucks got to come bring more sodas so we can sell them again next week, right? Like I, I understand all those things happen. I just don't know, like where that line is. Is there a mm-hmm. crossover where we can get people to discuss it amongst each other, right? Like I think there's this huge group of promoters that's wants to be so silent about it because they th- mm-hmm. still think that business is done like when your dad did it, right? Your dad was that. I, even though I never got a chance to n- know your dad, uh, Greg Marlowe, who was knew your father well, <laughs> right, has been a good engager for me of things that would happen. And I, I think it's interesting how, how things have changed and what we need to do to get things up to what maybe some people are winning and doing now you know that that's what i want to see happen i want to see new new ways of going about things and i think we have to figure out a way that you can answer that question Mm -hmm. is that i think what gets him to you Mm -hmm. how does that happen and and because there's only 50 more of him there's not that many right right there's so what what brings him and if he's not even thinking about it why is he not thinking about mm-hmm. it like why is he that uh, that that place was a mogul mm-hmm. right like caraway held back in the day uh, right uh, like this is what the thing that hurts me i'm, I'm, I'm serious mm-hmm. langley and i've had late night conversations retarded about this i'm sorry See? <laughs> <laughs> your wife's gonna get you uh, yeah, i'm sorry i'm not alone <laughs> I, I i i we we've discussed it a lot about how these old places that that some of these legendary guys like you know how, how do we get everybody involved in everything mm-hmm. many people remember when things were good and m- many people also remember how bad they were when things were good does that make sense people don't always just remember all the great things right, right? so p- people are there's a, the greatest part about that round table that we had two or three weeks ago with the guys like Kilby or Lightning or was that group of racers remembers both sides. They remember when it was good and they remember when it was good, but it still sucked, right? (laughs) Like we were still getting fights and things still cost the same amount. And so I find it intriguing that that's the, where I think the barrier is. I think the barrier is Zach Brunninger doesn't even think about coming to Caraway. Mm -hmm. Not because it's bad. How do we make him? think about not not coming to Caraway, right yeah. there's there's a bunch of people i mean i know dylan hauser he's really vocal in our chats a lot of times a bunch of other little guys that are limited dudes that that kind of are in groups mm-hmm. right. right like five six like how do you get with them guys right like how do you what do you do to get to them guys and say hey i'd like to do this i'd like to do this I see Ed Cox doing it his his way, right? But now you're you. It's rebranded, completely different deal, right? New, washed, cleaned. Not that it was bad before, but you're 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 at the helm. So how do you get to those guys? How do you get to those little pockets of guys? Travis Bird used to be, a, which I would call one of those guys, right? Like the the limited guys that do a good job at it. That mm-hmm. that that want to go to some places that have four or five of their buddies that they like racing against every week, mm-hmm. right? Like, how do you reach out to them? Do you do it through social media? Do you do it, like, how do we all get in touch with each other? What, what do we do? How do you make them want to come? I don't really know. <laughs> I don't think anybody I mean, knows. Right. No. What do you think? I got. I don't know. I mean, that, that's don't a hard lie, bull. <laughs> that's bull. <laughs> we know. We uh, and every no. driver will tell you money. That's, that's yeah, what right. But right. that's why that's I don't want to ask him. Actually, the answer no. because but, uh, if right. you ask that, he came to Franklin County and we didn't pay very good. Right. No. Agreed. So, but so, the cost of going there wasn't a whole lot right. because that's tires what's going to get you. Entry there. was cheap. Like the pit that, passes were. That cheap. was my point. And I so. think you know him. You know, going to F50, going to a two tire program. You know, those are things that are steps in the right direction to take us there. Yep. And I think. You know, we're going to have to go further than that. Mm-hmm. I think as a whole, as a collective, the F50 is the start. It's not mm-hmm. the end. It's the start. Eventually, we're going to have to get to the Y3, or we're going to have to get to the 980, yeah. or the 970, <laughs> yeah. or whatever the tire no, is yeah, that, that we got to get to, whether it's Hoosier or American Racer or whatever it is. This is the start, not the finish. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that's what I think is going to take us to the next level because you can't pay out purses that are, you know, huge right. you on no what people. you got coming through the gate. Well, <laughs> like, well, like the 602 Tour, it, 
it almost pays too much. It's a forty some hundred dollar purse for twenty cars. Right. That's really too from a promoter yep. side, that's really too much money. Right. It's eight hundred to win. It gets to be a hundred to start at what, fifteenth place, I think Something it like is. That. But and there's not a lot of money made on that D eight hundred tire no. for the promoter side. But it keeps that cost down for that guy and if it would ever build like it should, it yep. would you know, it's not so bad to pay forty some hundred dollar purse if you got the twenty some cars because all right. you know what I do all the purses are front loaded exactly you know a forty some hundred dollar purse the top ten will get three thousand of it yep so you need them other ten to start making the economics work well that's why I can't understand why so many tracks are still trying to run a late model and a limited division just mm-hmm. pick one pick one pick one and go in one pick direction pick one one hundred percent pick you, one you gotta you gotta close that purse out yeah, I mean that was one of the things that I suggested to Motor Mile that they needed to close that they you need one or the other because mm-hmm. you cannot do them both right and maybe they will this year maybe they'll have a good year but that doesn't mean they'll have a good year next year mm-hmm. and three years down the road and five years down the road you can't keep going in the same direction and expect different results mm-hmm. yep. i mean that's my opinion the, the problem too is it, like you were talking about the guy that wants to get in a four banger like it places like hickory uh, i don't want to keep bang, you know but i'm i ready and they're all time the the four cylinder divisions ten grand yeah to get into yeah the, a motor's ten grand now yeah. for, for a four cylinder so so why would I want to do that when <laughs> I can spend ten grand on a limited car uh, they uh, <laughs> they have a lot of, they have a lot of help for that in in going in the front wheel drive direction oh, with four that. cylinders because that doesn't cost that much yep. you know yeah Barry Wilson's so proven that he has proven that absolutely <laughs> I mean Barry's a great example of that and I think that's honestly I mean so many of the divisions we have at a lot of these racetracks are going in the wrong direction. They're going mm-hmm. in directions where you're spending more money. I think you're mm-hmm. going in the right direction by, you know, reeling some of that in. And I think other tracks are too. I mean, it's not just you. And, and we, I mean, and as bad as I hate to say it, if you're going to keep a limited division, it needs to go to a 602 motor. I, I totally agree. I mean, like South Boston had a perfect opportunity this year to do the 602 and 603 because they're pretty equal to start working to the 602. And they went to the 3, the 2, the 4. Well, and, and Motor Mile, to their credit, they did go 603, 602. Right. You that's, know, that, that's the right. And yep. they may have allowed that before. Somebody will chime in if they did. But, but that's the right direction, I think. That is the right direction. I mean, and they need to go basically say, hey, you know, in three years or five years or whatever the number is, we're phasing out the 603. So get you a 602. And I think that's the right direction to go because the less it costs the racer to come to the racetrack, the less you have to pay. Yep. And the longer you can keep the lights on. And, and Dylan actually just come up with a uh, good point here. Um, that's that's yeah. a that's rare. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Let's it not is. Go that far. <laughs> but um, make you got to make the racers feel appreciated. You got to make them want to go spend money at your racetrack because there's hundreds of other racetracks, and like I said, there's always a bass boat calling your name with right. with the yeah. with the rod and reel. Sure. Um, there's a hundred other things you can go spend six eight hundred dollars on on a weekend. I mean, I could go buy a, a giant TV, sit my but on a on the couch and watch whatever the heck I wanted to do, right. whatever you want. Yeah, but but see, I, I you got to make us feel appreciated. Make yeah, but us I think feel that's 100%. bullshit. And, no, no, no. You, no, you really uh, did. That's that's the ultimate. No. that's what got Zach to come to Franklin County. And, and I, I don't disagree with that. I, but here's the problem: covered all of his problems. The racer can't use it as a crutch against a promoter. Agreed. Right? Because I I'm neither. Right? Mm-hmm. I'm neither. So the the bad part is I think that gets used so much that your dad wasn't into making friends, uh, and I'm only gonna yeah. say you, a, no. a, 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 per, a person a, a person that Langley knows that's decent at promoting yeah. wasn't into making friends. It's not about making friends. He's gonna die before this night. And you can <laughs> you, listen. You can punch me if you want to, but the analytics say what they are. Right? People enjoyed them dudes because they didn't give a damn what anybody <laughs> thought. They did what they were supposed to, and it carried on. They were willing to bear the burden and eat the crap that went with it, both on the wins and the losses, and that's why they were successful. That's it. That's it. I agree. So um, there's no But way. we live in a different day. Uh, yeah. Fine, so. it's a different day. But I'm just saying you can't. I also think that it's much. That's one thing I will get on you about, only for the simple fact of I don't think it's. To make the racer feel good. That's a, give everybody a trophy. Well, I, he's not I, saying I appreciate that at all. That's not what he said at all. Yeah, yeah. I think you missed. I'm you tired missed of going to hit, once get let's say a racetrack and saying, "Oh, your left side side skirt it needs to be cut three inches because it's it's level here and drops down four inches. You need to cut it now." I'm tired of getting nitpicked on and and making stupid things that don't matter. Yeah, but that's because uh, the sport's fix. getting better. But if we were on an eight inch tire. And a 602 motor, that wouldn't matter. <laughs> Correct. Yep, none of that That's, would matter. I, correct. <laughs> the bump stops, the shocks, Don't all that stuff down. wouldn't matter. Right. I agree. 
Yep. I, I think totally. I, I, I think that's the way we win. I, I really I do. I, I, I like that. I like that win. I mean, we've had a hundred conversations I know. about it. I, mean, I know. I mean, the six hundred two tour that David started is a perfect. I'm telling you, if we could just ever get other so racetracks to see it earlier, yeah. right? Like I so I was not a proponent. I have to tell you, I wasn't a proponent. I had an option to do some other things when it came up for sale and did all these things. And I, I, I talked to Langley, and I didn't know, and I didn't like this, and I didn't like that, and I just didn't like where it was going. And it was my own fault. And he liked it, and I did. I couldn't see it, and I said no i'm not listen I, i'm not a player i don't want to and i think that was a win i i, Clearly, I it, missed it I, listen i missed it, it but, was, but uh, what i'm saying if we could get more racetracks to awards yes it would hurt the tour maybe a little bit that a guy would leave and go run on a racetrack yep. but in the long run we would get more cars that would help the tour right if more racetracks would realize that the 602 motor and that d800 tire is a good combination I've had options to buy both of those two, the Southeast Limited and the 602, just like you. And they, I, I regret not doing the 602 deal, not necessarily the Southeast Limited tour. Does that make sense? I think the 602 will be the longer win. Yeah, it I, will. I, you're right. It probably will be. I know. You were right. Listen, I'll say it. I'll say I it on here. You were I right. wasn't even going to. You looked at but me. But I will tell you that I love Greg Marlowe. Well, yeah. He yeah. said, he said, you bunch of whining girls, men used to race. <laughs> See? And and he is a hundred percent correct he about is that. It's true. Just is just right. let's just ask Greg about the lawnmower gas. <laughs> <laughs> lawnmower gas. But, wow. but oh, we're going back to the guy that spends you know a, a fair amount of money at the racetrack. They got a hundred other different options. Now the racers will go. That's what I do. I still I've been mistreated at many many racetracks. Still go because I love racing, and I will continue to go because I love racing. I want my boy to be able to go to the racetrack with me and watch me. At the race, I want to have fun with my buddies over here, drink beers they afterwards. They don't even like you, dude. Yeah, they they're just, just hang out with you. <laughs> they're here for the beer. Right. <laughs> but, I don't know. Uh, they must like him because they, they got to kind of be like bodyguards. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're going to get into a fight at some point or another. <laughs> I've known these guys since they were like 13 years old. Right. And, yeah, but like and the, now they're 14. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, but like the 602 tour, basically you're looking at 150 bucks for three or four people getting in the pits. And mm-hmm. Well, let's say 200 Just round it off. $200 for transponder yeah. to get in the pits and all that. One tire. Let's figure one tire. So we're another 100 and a quarter. No, let's see. 560 that's $135, something like that. Yeah. So we're, we're at 350 roughly, for you to go race. Mm-hmm. The least you're going to win is 100 So does a limited guy want it? That's my question, I guess, to the people listening, all four of you. <laughs> right? does, does the guy, does the limited racer, uh, just drop it in the comments, does the limited racer want to go buy one tire? Does he well, want he's not actually buying one, one tire. tire. He's figuring no, in that's what No, I understand. Right. right, I understand. But if we're going to do a, a, or your other presentation that you own also, so you're winning, is the Southeast Limited deal with... Four tires. Correct. So we have opposite ends of the spectrum here. Mm-hmm. So the interesting part is a guy that has two different businesses with two different business models would be to me to know which way wins longer right does is, is the guy want to come limited in race four or does he want to do two and hang out do racers ever make good decisions for themselves no but that's why the numbers don't <laughs> i lie. mean I, I, and i'm being no. serious no, i, mean, I think the, I th- well you're hoping maybe the southeast limited picks up guys that aren't ready to back to the 602 right. but yet they're not really f- can afford to do the cars yeah, tour because yeah, late the model's then? done with cars tours basically the late model now i agree yes. i mean they you know the racetracks are gonna have to wake up and realize that late model's done with you, need to, you need to get on board with the cars tour only, right now only one or two racetracks right. can sustain mm-hmm. that i mean and even less than last year I think. who are they i mean south boston for sure yep I and then i you know i don't know who else you know what i mean the two tire deal that Damn, mo- some I tracks are I going could get to get you to start something there. <laughs> I don't know who the other one is either. Mm. I don't know who it is. I wouldn't answer if I did. <laughs> I wouldn't say their name. The two tire deal that the most tracks are going to, several tracks this year, yeah. is a great step forward uh, yeah. towards the right direction. I feel. Yeah. I, the reason that we they went away from that is because the big money team said, "Well, why would we bring a a rental program in here and?" and get two stickers and two used tires, and the car's junk now because the kid can't drive, but they're going to have an excuse. The car's great. You're not going to pay me to make you, you know, get you a bad right. car, so we're going to excuse. We're going to put it on the tires. Right. So they sit there, oh, the car, you know, tires were junk. That's why the car was junk, why the kid didn't run well. Yep. Um, and that's what happened. We got to that model because we had all these kids coming down, and a lot, you know, eight, ten cars were coming in each week in different places that were rental programs, um, and then we – catered to them and lost the Dexter Juniors. Dexter Junior has raced, what, five times in the last, what, 
a year, and then if you add that three years, he's raced probably ten times. Um, yep. What are you saying? You've lost the the guy that works nine to five. That so you think Dexter Jr. quit racing? Why? I, I it's think too it, expensive. Too expensive. I mean, and, and, if, and many like him. And if we had a six hundred two class. You could probably and go I've never drove a six oh yeah, and I've never draw, drove a six oh two. I've never drove on eight inch tires, so well, I don't never know drove how anything. Yeah, that's a very good point. You failed a steering wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Your crew did a good job setting it up, and you yep. won twice. Do you, yep. think, <laughs> do you think it really matters? I, mean, I, I don't do think, think so. People, that's what I'm getting to. Like, I don't think it matters. Do you think that people like I, I watch you. You're a perfect example. You're, you are a perfect example for what I'm getting ready to say. Guys that you see working their butts off and sometimes i think you're not going to make it <clears throat> like i'm not dogging you i mm-hmm. honestly you and i have talked about this i yep. think sometimes there's no he is bit off more than he can chew mm-hmm. i'm in it with you right i'm in it with you yep so i think we got him right like we're gonna get to bust his bust him this is gonna be the time <laughs> where he doesn't make it up the hill yep. right he set this bar so high but you do what 90 percent of other racers do you just keep working until you get there mm-hmm. so my question is is that 200 bucks the difference between making it to the racetrack and not making it to racetrack because you'd figure out a way to do it. I would. Right. So would many others. Mm-hmm. But you wouldn't make it as much. I wouldn't make it as much. That's the big part. Because I do. I still do that. I mean, that's why I race eight times a year. Yeah. I'd race 20 if I could. I'd love to. 2012. I raced every week except for one week at Hickory Motor Speedway. And I told Kevin halfway through the season, I said, you're going to kill people. I said, we've got to make this. Not literally. But you're <laughs> yeah. going to get the reason the car counts go to 8, 10 in the middle of summer is because they can't afford to replace right front fender, left front you know, fender, nose, yeah. duck work every week. Yeah, and the problem is he needs to race every week. I mean, yeah. Yeah. He does. He that, I'm saying, and that's if you don't keep that going, people oh, don't know. Whoa, crashing. <laughs> <laughs> people well, don't here. know when, yeah. you know, to show up. They yeah. don't know when, you know. I mean, I, I had people when I was on a every other week schedule, yep. I'd have people call me on the week I was off and go, hey, man, I, I'll see you this weekend. Yep. W- where are you going? Yep. You know what I mean? They didn't know. They were mm-hmm. they were off on that. And I'm sure yeah, he's running the same thing. He's sitting over a hundred thousand dollar year lease. Yep. Yeah. You go along with it. He's got to figure out how to pay for yep. it and yep. numbers is how it gets there. I mean and, and I don't want to beat Kevin up. I really don't. Yeah. Because I know he's got his own set of problems. Oh, sure. I would love for him to Every come on sometime and, and, and well, we want him to come on. I, I think he'll be coming on in the next couple of weeks. Okay, that'd be great. Because I, I I wanna know what his problems are. Right. Because we don't know those problems. Right. I agree. We're not gonna fin- we're not gonna fix this. With us sitting here complaining twenty four seven about it, because it makes him not want to be a promoter. What does he right. do? He I doesn't agree. come back as a promoter. I agree. Now 100%. the track turns into a, a, a graveyard. All right, we've had a hell of a conversation. We, we got to wrap this up. So let's uh, <laughs> let's get some, uh, you know, parting thoughts. Closing thoughts. I'll go with you first, Zach, since you've been running off at the mouth here pretty. Yeah, I have. <laughs> wow. <laughs> 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 you, 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 you came me to. You told me to come here and talk. So hey, I you done good. Talked. You yeah. done good. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, I just want to appreciate. I really appreciate you guys having me on. Um, you, your crew's leaving. Yeah, they're 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 taking the beer with them, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so um, they said you had enough. <laughs> but uh, just want to thank everybody for listening. Yeah, man. How about you, Dan? Okay, don't forget we start racing in 13 days on Sunday, March the 10th, and the Triad Racing Preview is this weekend, March the 2nd, for the ABC tracks, which is Ace Bowman, Grand Caraway, basically is the the three yep. circle tracks represented there. And so uh, anybody in the Carolina, mid Carolina area has got something available time Saturday from nine to five. Go by and check out the Triad Racing Peer Review. All that money is that they take in use about ten thousand dollars. They donate it to some charities and all, which is good. And so awesome. And yeah, uh, definitely good. And uh, join us or some racetrack if you can't come right. to Carolina. You know, the main thing is we need to get people out to the short tracks. Mm-hmm. Well, you got a good opportunity to draw people on a Sunday. I, I'm a firm believer that Sunday is a great day to race. I know yep. in the middle of the summer it's extremely difficult, right. but man, that's an, a, a great opportunity for uh, for uh, you know people to come out because they don't have anywhere else to go. Nobody else is racing, so hopefully you have a big turnout. And, I hope and, so. Uh, and I appreciate you guys having me. kicked on. off. All right, Roger. How about you? I don't know. Give something away. I want somebody <sighs> to give something away. Meaning, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Call, call, reach out to these guys. Reach out to Darren. Reach out to anybody. Re- Zach's been giving beer away. All yeah, night. <laughs> he is. I, I'm just reach out. Give, give. You know what I mean. Get, try to help somebody out. Do I don't. Something, I don't think out. he's offered Darren one all night. No, he hasn't. That's messed up. I don't. I don't drink. Right? No, just, and then he tried to give an empty after all that. No. I don't. Honestly, I don't drink. <laughs> I, I appreciate you coming yeah. on. I, I really do. I think. Uh, 
you know we got to support our tracks here we got to reach out reach out to each other and messenger and and you know text and if you're not involved there's easy ways to get involved reach out to renee reach out doc love can hook you up and get you involved with the right people or langley or you know we we got to somehow find a way to make some common ground in the middle of all this craziness yep. to where we keep making it better every week I mean, I think that's the goal. So that's hopefully it. we get enough conversation going. and Maybe some promoters, more right promoters direction. to come on. A- yeah. Absolutely. I mean, hey, we got one on here tonight right. that and talked. I, I appreciate him. And he talked on. freely. I, I you know. know and I, he didn't hold anything back. I don't know how back. much I appreciate that because uh, I'm struggling with promoters don't want to talk freely. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're in a hard position, so I understand. But uh, I think uh, I think they all need to speak up. And I've, I've told multiple mm-hmm. promoters this. Start speaking up, because if you don't speak up, nobody's speaking for you. Yep, I can tell you right now, everybody's speaking against you, mm-hmm. not for you. So you got to. Yeah. Uh, next week, uh, Cars Tour preview. Yes, uh, we'll have uh, a host of guys in here. Plus uh, Jack McNelly from the Cars Tour will be here. So uh, a big show uh, next week. It'll go three hours, which this one pretty much did too. <laughs> but uh, uh, that one will be from six to nine. So uh, plan on uh, tuning us in next Monday. And I guess video, uh, video next week. Well, if we can get yes. dialed in, yeah. <laughs> yes, so, we're doing it. I, I think I think Doc Love is going to shove us out the door now. So. All right. That'll do it uh, for Race 22 Radio. Appreciate you guys uh, chim- uh, chiming in with us tonight. Uh, a lot of good comments, and, uh, you know, keep those coming. We'll uh, post a podcast and uh, all that, and, uh, you know, keep everybody up to date on everything going on in racing. And uh, we'll be at Greenville Pickens this weekend, uh, getting the season uh, really ramped up and started. I don't uh we're uh, we're trying to find some closer music over here I think but uh anyways that'll do it thank you guys have a good night